Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium, NM State in Liberty here tonight on homecoming. Adam Young alongside Danny Nee. So glad you could join us. Aggies looking for their first win. Liberty trying to make it four straight wins. Flames are red hot after starting the season 0-2. And boy, we lucked out again for weather. It is absolutely perfect again today. Mid-80s, light wind and sunny for the second straight week. There was some rain yesterday, also some heavy wind and lightning, but not today. Perfect weather for football and homecoming as the Aggies look for their second straight homecoming win against the Liberty Flames. Danny, keys to the game. Well, Adam, here's how I see it going down. I think when things get going rough, you got to go back to the basics. And the basics are offense, you got to pound the rock. So I'll, I'll, I think we need a high dose of Huntley Gibson. We're going to establish the run. Last week, Liberty gave up 228 yards. Maybe that's what we need to do is really get that run going that opens up those passing lanes. The second is we got to stuff Gandy Golden. We talked about Gandy Golden in the open. That is a big body, and he has some big games that he's played and played against us. They try to isolate him, so watch him being isolated against our smaller DBs, but we got to find a way to stop him. And the last one is stop the roller coaster turnovers. Mm -hmm. You know, had four against San Diego State, one against UNM, three against Fresno. We got to get back on where coach says you got to have one turnover and he can win a game. That's what we need to do. 14 turnovers now for the season for the Aggies, and Doug Martin, the head coach, called this a defining game this week. The Aggies are currently 0 and 5. Their first 0-5 start since 2015. When they began the year 0-7, they eventually won three straight and finished that season with a record of 3-9. and nine. On the other sideline is Hugh Freeze. He's the head coach of the Liberty Flames, and it's been an interesting year for Hugh Freeze. He's going to coach here tonight from an elevated platform on his Liberty sideline because he underwent back surgery in August. In back surgery, they found a staph infection. So Hugh Freeze has been kind of in and out of practice this year. There you see the elevated platform. The last couple of weeks at home, he's been coaching from an elevated platform. He's the former Ole Miss head coach. And Danny, you were telling me before, you've dealt with back surgery before. It's not fun. It is not fun. I've had two back surgeries, and when your back is hurting, there's nothing you can do to get away from the pain. And so they're trying to take care of him, trying to not get him running up and down and keep him in the one position. So we'll see how, that, how they handle that. It seems like they've been doing okay with that so far, Adam, but let's see how tonight they do. Liberty won the toss, and they will receive the kick. Dylan Brown will kick off for the Aggies. Aggies trying to get back on track. 0-5 start to the campaign. Matchup of two FBS independents. They're going to meet twice for the second straight year. Here's Brown's kickoff. It's a low squibber, and it's picked up by Shadro Lewis, the freshman with the return for Liberty. There hasn't been many returns for the Aggies against them this year. Lewis finally dragged down at the 20-yard line, and that's where Buckshot Calverts and the Flames offense will begin. Hey, that's a great name, so I, I'm just anxious that we get to call that name again all night long, and it's, it's apropos because he is a heck of a, got a heck of an arm and a great, great name. Steven Buckshot Calvert from Plantation, Florida, 6'2", 180, 98 of 158 this year. Those are good numbers for him. His interception numbers are down from a year ago at this point. He has three straight 300-yard passing games. In motion is Antonio Gandy-Golden. Calvert will throw it far side to Gandy-Golden. Jason Simmons Jr. whips in the open field. Gandy-Golden, first down and more. This is a big guy, Danny, at 6'4", 220. Yeah, Simmons came flying in there and maybe just break down a little bit more. He had him. But you know, with a good receiver, a big receiver, it didn't bug him. He just stuck a little arm down there, and you can see him just kind of shed one block, shed two blocks. There's a first, gets around the second, and he's the guy you just got to keep your eye on and wrap him up. Do not let him get in extra yards. Pick up of 17 for Gandy Golden, who's in motion once again to the near side of your screen. Gandy Golden not the only threat for Buckshot. Calvert, who was under heavy pressure right up the gut from Devin Richardson, the redshirt freshman, Will Linebacker. 
Yeah, you know, that's what uh, was really great last week that we saw great pressure, lots of QB hurries. And I think with that, it allows the DBs to play a little closer because the ball is not going to be exact. And that's exactly what happened there. Game a little shot and the ball just kind of came out a little wide. Second down and 10 for Calvert in the Liberty offense. They're looking for their first four and two starts since 2010. Running back here is Frankie Hickson, redshirt senior from Lynchburg, Virginia. Mike That's where check. Liberty's one, located. One. Mike check. Aggies will rush five on the carry. It is Hickson. Quality pickup on second down. He was really good, Danny, against the Aggies last year in the two matchups. He ran for 271 combined in the two games last year. Yeah, you know they have two very good running backs, and part of that uh, good running back is a good offensive line, and you can see that's a big, strong offensive line right there. Somebody jumped. Flat comes in on a third down and a long three. Reggie Smith is a referee tonight. Reggie Smith does not have his mic working, but offsides was called on Xander Yarborough. Five-yard penalty, advantage there, Liberty. And there you see a little jump in there and made contact. I think uh, Xander was thinking the tackle pull move first, but that's not the way the official saw it. So first down for the Flames and Calvert. All the way up to the 50-yard line. This offense averaging 26 points per game. Right in the belly of Hickson again. The Aggies sniff out the run. The first man to meet him is Javon Ferguson, who leads the Aggies in tackles again this year after a pickup of five yards. You know, behind a big line right there, that's a good stop. But I like to see all the Aggies around the ball like we did, you know, gang tackling. That's what it's all about. Frankie Hickson, Joshua Mack, and Peyton Pickett, the three running backs Liberty will use. Pistol look. They fake the handoff. Pass is complete to DJ Stubbs. The Aggies had good pressure again, but Calvert with a quick release. Yeah, tried to get a little play action pressure there, get your hands up, still able to get the pass off. Simmons comes in and finishes off, but not before he got, you know, five, 10 yards on that. 17th catch this year for DJ Stubbs. It's for a gain of 13 and another first down for the Flames. Flames had some issues last week trying to punch it in from up close against UNF. The pitch goes to Hickson. And he's upended by Austin Perkins, who's currently second on the team at tackles. That was his 38th this year. Yeah, I'd like to see Austin come screaming up like that to get to shut that down right away. Trying to get the edge, and Perkins comes in there, cuts his legs off, and knocks him down. Liberty scored 17 last week against UNM at home. They won 17 to 10, but it should have been more. Had some turnovers in the red zone. They swing it out again for Stubbs. Good block on the outside by Kevin Shaw. That gives Stubbs a couple extra yards. His second catch during this opening drive for Liberty. You know, get a couple guys out there flooding that zone to the left in there, and there's nothing you can do if you're the DB back there. you got to fight off the block and just hold on and don't let them get in the end zone, which is what they did. But Liberty, they're marching. Liberty moving the ball well here in this opening possession. Hickson still the running back. Tight end is Zach Fouts. Play clock is down to 10. Liberty also taking their time a little bit on this possession. Hickson on the handoff. Flag comes in. He's taken down by Arashi Hodge Jr. The flag did come in. It's holding on Liberty, so a 10-yard penalty will back him up. Well, that, that's a costly one right there for Liberty.
Good opening series so far for Buckshot Calvert as they back it up. Well, catches on this drive for DJ Stubbs and also a catch for Antonio Gandy Golden, one of the best wide receivers in the country. First down and 20. They fake the pitch. Downfield, overthrown. The tight end, Zach Fouts, was wide open. You know, they, they ran a play similar to that last week where they scored against UNM, where they faked one way and they stuck a, a snuck a tight end out the backfield. In this case, they're faking a little play action pitch, having everyone come up on it, and they're trying to just sneak someone right behind there. Fouts, there he is, number 40, and uh, just he missed him. I think he had him. It was open, just missed the pass. Not a whole lot of mistakes this year for Calvert. He's only thrown three interceptions after 18 a year ago. Second down and long. Good pressure again. Pass is juggled and then caught by Stubbs. A flag comes in again, though, and it might be holding again, Danny. Yeah, that would be a break right there. But the juggle sure helped the defense. But, you know, I still I like the game tackling, and you can see when he's juggling that. Yeah, penalty again on Liberty will push them back even further. And it's going to bring up second down and a mile. Here's the little juggle, the quick pass to the outside there. He juggled it for a second, but both Aggies shed their block and get up and make a tackle where there's no extra yards. Doesn't matter. It's going back. Hold. Line to gain is the two. Calvert fakes right, dumps it off, incomplete. Oh. This pressure is really getting to him too, Danny. That it was is. Matt Young and also Xander Yarborough on the D-line. Well, it's a good thing they had some pressure and they get, didn't get the pass off because if he got that one off, there was no one there. There was a receiver that ran a DB out of the zone. Let's look at the pressure there. Lots of pressure, everyone releasing. Richardson or someone should have stayed back checking for that running back coming out of the backfield, but he missed him, and it's a good thing he did. But it's the pressure, Adam. You're right. Third down and 23. They need to get to the two. Liberty just 32% on third down this year. That is a low conversion rate. Front side pressure. Xander Yarborough right there, and he's going to drop Calvert. First sack for Yarborough in his young career. I like it. And you know what was nice, Adam, is that when he got in there and held, got a fistful, a fistful of jersey, he was not letting go. There is no way. Swung him around. He tried to break loose, but it's like, no way. You, you can't go. This is my first. I'm not letting go. See him right here. Lots of pressure from everyone. Coming from the top of the screen, gets that fistful of jersey and just holds on. Great sack. Nice job. This will be a 50-yard field goal try for Alex Probert, who's a redshirt junior who is one for three this year. Hasn't attempted many. Has a make from 42. He's missed from 43 and 32. No good. Wow. He doinked it. Certainly the leg was there, but it just... Doink right off the goalpost. Third miss this year for Probert, and Hugh Freeze's ball club cannot capitalize. Aggie ball when we come back to Aggie Memorial. Well, it started off as a good series for Hugh Freeze in Liberty. Did not end well, though. A 50-yard miss from Probert. The Aggies will take over, and... Danny, we're paying close attention to O.J. Clark and Jason Huntley when the Aggies are on offense. Yeah, when, when the Aggies are on offense, Huntley had a big last week, nine carries, had a TD, four receptions. O.J. Clark leading the team in receptions against a stubborn Liberty defense where Jesse Lamine has 4.5 sacks. You have uh, Espinosa who's got 23 tackles, two interceptions. That's a stingy defense. Let's see if we can't keep our eye on those four players and get a score. The Aggies will start with an empty backfield on their first drive. Pretty good field position, too, after the missed field goal for Liberty and for Probert. And now Huntley will motion into the backfield to the right of Atkins. Huntley will not take the carry. Atkins will pull it and run with a quality pickup on first down. Well done. It was very well done. I'd like to say uh, that I saw that happening all the way here, but I was faked out as well. I was watching Huntley that I thought I had the ball. Part of that is that you have to hold on to that fake very, very long, and he did. No one was there. Great pickup of extra yardage, and then take care of yourself. 
And Huntley has been so good lately, Danny, in the running game. Here's his first carry. Jason Huntley still on his feet down the sideline as he spins out of the tackle. Another first down. You know, every game that we call, we see Jason Huntley, it feels like he's just really filling that role more and more. In this case, he got the corner, but he wasn't just going to fall down when someone took out his arm. He was just going to continue to go, even at the very end where they thought they had him, and he spun out of it and picked up extra yardage. That's just good hard running right there. 19-yard pickup for Huntley. Atkins will pump and run. Huntley in the previous two, Danny, 21 carries for 196. He's running the ball as good as he's run it his entire career. And you know, when you have that play right here where he just faked the pass and took it up the middle and you pick up four yards, that's a good first down. Huntley still the running back, four out wide. They dump it off to Huntley in space. Huntley gets a good block from Brian Trujillo, the Albuquerque native, who sets him free for a few more near the first down marker. Yeah, Brian Trujillo, he's, he's really some, I talked to Coach Richmond uh, sometime back, and he said, you know, Brian Trujillo is just a leader. There's nothing that we can't do with the guy. We move positions on him. He never says a word. He's a true leader. He just comes to work every single day. He picks up a big block there. It's nice to have him to be an Aggie. Third down for the Aggies, one yard to go. This is Christian Gibson who gets it, breaks free, and he's tripped up inside the 10-yard line. First down and goal. You know, Christian Gibson, as you saw in our open where he was really pouring it on, here he is again hard running. Last week against Fresno, he stuck his nose down and just went north and south, square the shoulders and push on. You see him do the same thing here, not just fall down. Good hard running by both Gibson and Huntley. Gibson ran for 127 in the first matchup last year against Liberty. First down and goal from the 10. This is Huntley staying patient, bounces to the outside. Can't get by Lewis, he got his hand on him. And yeah, then Lemonier dropped him for the tackle. Yeah, Lemonier was, was there the whole time, almost got past him. There's not much there. But here's what happens. Here's what happens when you start running the ball and you're effective at running the ball. It gets a little harder near the end zone when you're in the red zone. I'll give you that. But what happens is the linebackers have to freeze because they have to respect that. You do not want Jason Huntley to get open. So when they do that, that opens other passing lanes. Huntley loses two, he's in motion. Gibson takes the handoff, powers ahead inside the five yard line, down to the four as he picks up eight yards on the rush. You know, Gibson, although it doesn't look like it, he, although it does look pretty cut right there at 6'1", 210, when he squares his shoulders and he's coming at you and you're a safety and he's got a little momentum behind you, he, you better be careful because he may rock your world and he's running very hard tonight. Third down and goal from the four. Two carries so far for Christian Gibson, a couple for Jason Huntley as well. Atkins will toss it, incomplete, no. intercepted. Intercepted by Javon Scruggs. Scruggs meets Atkins, spins out of the tackle, and he's taken down inside the 30. That pass was intended for Eli Anderson, the seldom used running back, and he just couldn't hang on. Oh, it's Matt Young on the tackle down there, but Adam, my, it, it's just, I've lost my breath. I'm stumbling for words here. Little play action fake, dumps it on the outside. Here's the thing, never tip a ball up because a safety will come up and grab that ball and did. Was Matt there? Oh, also, Josh came over to shut it down. Wow, that is a dagger to the heart. That was redshirt sophomore running back Eli Anderson, who has only really been used this year in the Alabama game during some time in the second half. And he was wide open, wide open oh, on the six. play. That was six. Big break for Liberty. Nothing there for Maine transfer Joshua Mack, his first run tonight. Former FCS All-American at Maine. Wow, momentum just, just uh, ebbs and flows, right? That's amazing. They come down, couldn't score, missed a field goal, come down, throw a pick, gets all the way down there. I think you know those boys, don't you? That was the basketball team, yeah, huh? Aggie men's basketball team on the sidelines. They'll be honored during the next media timeout. You go to Mack again, trying to bounce it to the outside. Still on his feet, never went down. 
The officials never whistled the play dead, and Max able to get it inside the 15-yard line and move the chains. Was not down by rule. It's first down. Well, they tell you play to the whistle, so if you don't hear a whistle, you better keep going. So let's see what happens here if he gets down. He doesn't fall, and they quickly run another play. Yeah, they got it off in a hurry. Yep. And Mack on the ground again. Six foot 195 redshirt junior from Pittsburgh, New York. He's been one of the best ball carriers this year for the Flames. In fact, he entered tonight one yard shy of Frankie Hickson. Mack had 247 on the ground this year, and Hickson had 248. Second down and seven. Pistol look for Liberty. And there's another sack. The sumo sack for Cedric Wilcox, his second in as many weeks, gives him 18 and a half for his career. Yeah, I, I like that during the week you were able to talk to Cedric and you said what a great guy he is and, and how articulate he is. And I just love when he see, plays so hard. And look at that wingspan. Basketball player in high school? Oh yeah, he can do a lot with that wingspan right there. High school basketball power forward. He's been a star in the line for the Aggies during his five years and his four years on the field. Third down and 13. Calvert slings it out for Mack. He stays on his feet. He's going to be taken down short of the marker, though. The Aggie is able to save seven, potentially, at the very least, a first down. And now Probert will have to come back out for a much shorter field goal try for Liberty. Under attempt, a 25-yard field, field goal try for Probert. He's only made one this year, one of four. And this one is good. So Liberty capitalizes on the Aggie miscue in the end zone. A drop pass by Eli Anderson leads to an interception. And then points for Liberty, 3-0 Flames. We're back with you here at Aggie Memorial Stadium, 3-0 Liberty. Field goal make for Probert after a big interception in the end zone for Scruggs. Here's the impact players on the other side of the ball. This is the offense for Liberty and the defense for the Aggies, Danny. Well, for the Aggies, uh, Jason Simmons, he, he is a hard-hitting uh, youngster that's coming on strong. 12 tackles last week. Hodge had eight tackles themselves, two tackles for a loss. That defense is doing a very good job. On offense for Liberty, we saw Hickson, we saw Mack, they're both running backs, very good running backs. A leading rusher, he's kind of a dual threat, Hickson. And Mack, he's tough. Last week, 14 carries, 95 yards, and we saw a big dose of both those guys. Well, that was a big swing in this game here. The Aggies were practically in the end zone for a touchdown. It turns into an interception on a bobbled pass that Eli Anderson could not hang on to, and it leads to three for Liberty. But for Liberty, it could have been more than three. It could have been a touchdown, but the Aggies able to hold them to three. Flames will kick off to the Aggies with under three left here in the first quarter. And this will be a return for Jason Huntley, who has five career kick return touchdowns. But this Liberty return team defense has been very good. They've been sixth in the country this year. Aren't special teams, aren't defense. So it's Aggie football. When we come back, we'll see if the Aggies can tie or take a lead. Homecoming from Aggie Memorial. Well, the first drive for the Aggies was good, Danny. It did not result in points, but it was a good drive before the interception thrown by Atkins in the end zone. We'll see if the Aggies can find some points out of this one. Jason Huntley changing directions. Might have one man to beat to go. Huntley into Liberty territory, and he's tripped up inside the 40. You know, there was two guys outside for Liberty, 
And I wasn't sure if Jason, how he was going to handle that, but what he did is kind of hold up, wait for some help to come and pick up a block, and he's able to really get the corner. And after that, he just turns on the Jets. Here it is here. You kind of see it out there. Josh Hydrick comes back and try to get a receiver to get another block right there on the edge. Holding. He picks that. Offense number 20. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. We'll play the down, first down. That's a killer. Yeah, that negates a 36-yard run. It's called our Navion Mitchell, the slot receiver. It would have been the longest run this year for Huntley. He's hard to stop right now, Danny. This is going back to the UNM game two weeks ago. We're on the ground. He is really hard to stop. He is. Navion Mitchell's in motion. Atkins will swing it out to him. Mitchell tripped up near the 25. They'll mark him down at the 25-yard line after he picks up five yards. You know, I like the way Mitchell runs the ball. He's kind of a scat back. You know, you can run him out of the backfield. In that case, the last play, they ran him out of the backfield. You can line him up in a slot, H-back formation. He can run out of that formation. He can block, although he got called for a hold here recently. But he's a, a kind of a great utility player. Yeah, Mitchell came in as a running back, and he has turned into a really good wide receiver. Pass is complete down the sideline to Tony Nicholson. That was amazing. His play took a long time to develop, so first of all, props to that offensive line up there. Josh looks off the safety, comes back to Nicholson on the outside. He's kind of doing a, a V out, and... Actually, Nicholson had to turn his head from one side to the other to make that catch. You catch up at the very end here and turns it up. That's a nice play right there. 30th catch this year for Tony Nicholson. Hand off to Christian Gibson, who carries the pile. He's running very, very hard in this game tonight, Danny. He certainly is. And the thing is, is that offensive line, that last series, if you could look at the offensive line, all four or five were, were just flying straight off the ball and engaging into their block and, and creating a hole and a gap where Christian can pour into, uh, but that line is really doing a fantastic job. Empty backfield for Josh Atkins on second down and three. Now motioning into the backfield is Huntley who breaks the tackle again, juggles the football, dancing around on the turf, trying to reach for the marker. He gets a pretty good spot. Looks like he's going to have the first down, or it's going to be very, very close. Well, I wish he would have just got the first down. Of course, it's easier to see from up there. First of all, it's kind of a run pass. He gives the ball, but there's nothing there. Whoa, oh, didn't see that the first time around. He drops the ball and picks it up again. Well, that was interesting. They're going to say the Aggies are just short of the first down. So it's going to be third down in inches. We've seen Adkins quarterback sneak in this situation before. This time it's going to be Huntley. All you need is the first down. He spins and he rolls for the first down. Dangerous when he bounced it to the outside on third and inches, but he found a way to get it. Uh, you know, uh, is that confidence, Adam? I, I'm a lot not of sure. confidence. You know, because you, if you don't get that edge, you're, you're tackled for a loss. So there he is there. He's got to try to get the edge. He does. He knows he has the first down. Lots of lots of defenders this on pursuit. So he just quarter. sat down, took the first down. And that is the end of one quarter of play. The Aggies are driving again. Really good balance so far of pass and run. And through one quarter, the Aggies trail Liberty 3-0. Stay tuned. Who knows what Jason Huntley will do next? Aggies at the 25 of Liberty when you come back. 119 total yards for the Aggies, just 75 for Liberty so far. 69 on the ground for the Aggies, 50 through the air. And Jason Huntley, the All-American senior running back, is doing a lot of things well again, Danny. We talked about it on the ground right now. It seems like he's running the ball as well as he's running his entire career. Lots of confidence. And the guys that you just saw him walk away from, and it wasn't just all the running backs. He's up there with the, with the big Bubba's up front, the offensive line, and that offensive line is doing a great job for him too. So both the offensive line and Jason Huntley are firing at the same time. It's putting some big numbers out there. 119 yardage already is what you said. That's pretty good stuff. 72-yard interception return for Scruggs. The big play so far. Atkins pumped twice and had no one to throw it to. There's Jesse Lemonier who 
has been all over the field again tonight for Liberty. Young man from Hialeah, Florida, transfer from Ventura College. Well, he did a great job in there, but that line tried to hold as long as he could. Josh had nowhere to go. Four guys in the pattern. I saw him saw look left, look right, look left, nothing. In motion is Navion Mitchell. Whistle blown. Don't Full see start. a flag, though. Offense number 52. Five okay, yeah, the flag's thrown. It's second down. Flag was on the outside. That's holding on Jalen Guerrero, who rolled his ankle on the first series two weeks ago at UNM and did not play last week. Well, it's get, glad to have him back, but, you know, the, the little movement there, uh, you know, that's tough. There's nothing you can do when you start leaning there. But that offensive line is doing a great job. That's a, a nice player to have from Mayfield on our roster. Empty backfield for Atkins, and he throws an interception. Slant route picked off. Brandon Tillman, the senior linebacker from Lexington, South Carolina, the 11th pick this year for Atkins. You know, Atkins is a little play action, and he's trying to draw the linebackers in, and then you pop up and throw a quick little slant. You see it to the left of your screen, but as they just jumped right up, right out of the uh, down position, and were able to pick that thing off. That's just tough. That's two picks right there. When you're getting close to scoring, that's going to make Coach a little bit angry. Yeah, you can make a case. The first pick was Arne Anderson, who probably should have held it in, but this one for sure is Arne Josh Atkins. And it's another pick when the Aggies are driving for points. Back to offense for Stephen Buckshot Calvert, and he throws it behind his intended receiver, Damian King. He had him wide open. And part of that is the pressure that, that uh, Buckshot is receiving. So Coach Spaziani is dialing up lots of different uh, blitzing, lots of different movements from the line up front. And as long as you're on Buckshot in his face, it makes it hard to see that pass clearly. That was Marcus Buckley who showed pressure from the Aggie defensive line on that throw. Cedric Wilcox also has a sack so far in the game. Here's Wilcox from the backside. Calvert steps up and he completes the pass to his tight end, Fouts. Richardson is trying to say it is incomplete. So is Javon Ferguson. Officials time out. Fouts is down. We can see the, here. The ruling on the... the ruling Richardson on the was right there. Catch. It was the hard to tell from that angle if Fouts ever had review. control of it. Big tight end from Roanoke, Virginia. Redshirt junior, 6'3", 250. And right now he's getting tended to on the turf. You know, if you, if you leave Buckshot sitting with lots of time, I think you'll see just what happened here is what you're going to see. In that last case, we, we rushed three, dropped everyone too deep, or in a zone look there. He had lots of time to canvas the field. Sees the big tight end across the middle. Let's see if we can't see anything. Does it, it looks no, like it kind of. Yeah, I, I think that's the ball like right around his belly. I don't think he caught it, Danny. I don't think so either. And Richardson said it, as soon as he was down, I was like, no, he didn't catch it. He did a really good job, though, of smothering the ball with his body on the turf. So it is going to be hard to tell. And remember, the call on the field is a catch for a gain of nine. This is a big play early here in the first half. Good to see Fouts get up and walk off on his own towards his sideline. Official still taking a look. We just saw Hugh Freeze. What an interesting year it's been for the first year Liberty head coach, former head coach at Ole Miss. He dealt with some back spasms in early August and underwent surgery August 16th. And while in surgery, doctors found a staph infection, so he missed. 24 straight practices from August 11th until the receiver September 10th. Never controlled the pass and it hit the ground. It is incomplete. It'll be third down and 10 from the 31 yard line. The clock is correct and we'll start on the snap. All right, the pass is incomplete. So the previous three weeks, Hugh Freeze has coached from the sidelines, viewing the game from an elevated platform. Now the previous three games for Liberty were at home. This was the first road game with the platform, so NM State agreed to let Liberty have a platform on the sidelines, and it's what Hugh Freeze calls his NASCAR pit box. <laughs> 
It kind of looks like it. Sure does. Hey, get a break there. We got a break on a no catch. Third down, 10 yards to go. Liberty converting on just 32% of their third downs this year. And they're 0 for 2 tonight. Aggies only rush three. Calvert able to step up and throw deep. He's looking for Kevin Shaw. He overthrew him, and he had him. Shaw had a stride on the two defenders. Jason Simmons Jr. was back there in coverage. Yeah, you know, I don't know how you how you get. Let some I do know, but it, it's it's kind of too bad because you're back there. You know where they have to go, and they're and they're going to try to cash in and go deep all the way. And you're right, Adam. He had both guys beat, and he was behind them. You know, if you're a fan, too, and you're just watching the quarterback and you see him throw it deep, you're probably saying to yourself, if you're the opponent, please don't let that be Antonio Gandy-Golden, who they're throwing to. And they have a lot of good targets, but Antonio Gandy-Golden has been one of the best in the country. Really good punt by Aiden Alvis. It was touched by O.J. Clark, or it wasn't. O.J. never touched it. And it bounces into the end zone. That was close. The Aggies will get it on the touchback at the 20. Josh Atkins has thrown two interceptions. The Aggie offense will try to get back on track after this. Ag day and homecoming. A couple of turnovers again. That gives the Aggies 16 now this year. Two interceptions thrown by Josh Atkins on possessions where the Aggies were driving for scores. So they trail 3-0. Adkins has Huntley to his left and flags fly. 65, ball start, offense number 65. Five yard penalty, it's first down. So earlier it was on Jalen Guerrero. This is on Tony Bello, who has shifted back to left guard from right tackle where he played last week because Guerrero was out with an injury. You know, that's what happens when a, a, a Lemonade lemon lemon is coming off that edge quick and hard. Not a whole lot here for Jason Huntley, who manages to get a few extra. He's kind of dancing around running the turf right now, and it's hard to take him down. Gain of three for Huntley. Brings up second down and 12 yards to go. Huntley was averaging 7.3 yards per carry before the game tonight. Atkins, who's already thrown two interceptions, throws it right through the hands of O.J. Clark, and that would have been a big gain. He had O.J. in stride. Yeah, I, it's, and of course, Adam, from up here, it's always easy to say, oh, you should catch it. You got both hands on the ball, but let's take a look here. It hmm. comes across there, and it does go right through there. That, that should have been caught. I think O.J. knows that, too. That's too bad. And O.J.'s been one of the main targets. Leads the team this year. 30 catches coming in. Fifth-year senior from Wichita Falls, Texas. And there's nothing there for Huntley. So the Yankees will have to punt. Their first two series were good before the interceptions. This one, not much. Yeah, there's not much happening right there. You're just trying to dig out a little bit, get some room for punting. You know, the, the, the penalty and the drop pass, that kind of hurt that drive right there, that, and that's, uh, that's unfortunate. The Aggie offense had really good rhythm on the first two series, and you did not see that during... That drive right there, a four and out leads to Theisler's first punt. And Peyton Theisler is averaging 44 yards per punt. Kicks it away to dangerous return man DJ Stubb, who backpedals inside the 30. Stubbs oh. can't get away from Chance that's, Cook. That's a nice tackle right there by Chance Cook. He was a star in special teams at his previous school in Oklahoma State in the Big 12, and he plays a big role in special teams right here. Buckshot Calverts will lead the Flames offense after this. Three nothing Liberty. It's been a low scoring game so far. We had a shootout here at Aggie Memorial between these two programs last year. Going back to last week for Liberty, they played UNM. UNM was coming off a 55 point game against the Aggies. The Flames offense had been playing well. 
Final score on that one was 17 to 10 in a game that many Liberty fans thought would be a shootout. And this one right now has been a defensive effort for both. And you know, Coach Martin during the week said that that defense, that Liberty defense is very good. It's very improved and, and maybe he's right. Buckshot Calvert, the leader of this offense for Liberty, making his 36th career start. Three straight 300-yard passing games for Calvert, who's only 4 of 10 here tonight. That was Gandy Golden in motion. They haven't gone too much so far. Calvert's looking his way, but he has no time. Ball is loose, and it's scooped up by left tackle Tristan Schultz. Who do you give that one to, Adam? I can't tell. Who was it? It was a whole group in there. I see everyone. I see there's Mr. Young, who is now coming on to his own right there. Matt. So let's see. Off the edge, Richardson. And I think it was Wilcott who got the ball I free. think you're right. I think he kind of shot up in, the, in between there. Remember, this Aggie defense is coming off their best defensive game of the season, allowing a season-low 30 last week to a good Fresno State team. Passes deflected, oh. almost intercepted by Shamon Lomax. This defense is everywhere. He, they are everywhere. You know, I got my fingers crossed up here because you're drawing up all kinds of different blitzes and everything else. And as long as he doesn't have time to sit back there and relax, the pressure, it makes it hard. In this case, it tips. You know, one of those come our way, we can take that to the house. Third down, 12 yards to go. Liberty really struggling on third down in the game. There you see it, they're 0 for 3. Aggies only rush three, now they rush four. They still get to the quarterback. Matt Young is chasing Calvert. The pass is hold in. And they don't even get back to the original line of scrimmage. Antonio Gandy-Golden, his second catch. I'm not sure what the Aggies are doing right now in the secondary, Danny, but they're keeping him in check. Yeah, they are, and I think part of that, too, is the pressure up front. So we have three guys. You have a late guy coming in. You see Matt on a delayed blitz, lots of pressure. I think that's what helps that secondary is the pressure on the quarterback. The punt from Aiden Alvis, a left-footed kicker. It's a high boomer again to O.J. Clark. Hasn't had many opportunities this year for returns. O.J. spins. He stays on his feet. O.J. Clark to midfield. O.J. Clark to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, and he's dropped down from behind. What a return. I see there's a flag in the back, though. And I think that's O.J. with his hands up. I'm with you. We're not sure what it is. I couldn't tell from here. That was a great return nonetheless. I'm not sure where the penalty is. Probably a block in the back or something. It's really usually where they throw that penalty flag. There's a flag. But what a great return that was. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 12. That's a 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Timeout. Well, that's on Kayla Mills, and to gate that one, the Aggies have had some explosion plays called back, including this one. We'll see if the Aggie offense can get back on track. 3-0 Liberty early on in quarter two. The fifth Aggie penalty, this one on Kayla Mills for a block in the back, negates a big punt return for O.J. Clark. And the Aggies will try to tie or take the lead here on this possession. Aggie head coach Doug Martin earlier this week at his weekly press conference, he called this a defining game this week for his team. This is really a defining week for us and a defining game, you know, in terms of, you know, how we're going to approach the rest of this season. Obviously, we've played a tough schedule, and we all know that it's been the toughest schedule in a group of five, without a doubt. Um, but there's certainly opportunities ahead for us, and that's going to, what's in your heart is going to get exposed from here on out through the rest of this season. And so that's a challenge for our guys to find out what you really have inside of you and can you rebound and go out and prepare really well. First 0-5 start for the Aggies since 2015 when they started that year 0-7. Eventually won three straight. They went 3-9 that campaign. 
Aggies will head on the road for three straight after this game. Atkins trying to just protect the football after heavy pressure came from Tyron Dupree out of his Mike linebacker position. You know, nowhere to go with the ball. Josh is trying to look. He's trying to hold on. The line is doing a good job blocking, but you can't do anything. Well, he we missed one right there at the point of attack, but there's nowhere he could have gone with that ball. Everyone was completely, completely covered up. Second down and 11. The Aggies with almost 120 total yards. More than Liberty so far. Not much there for Jason Huntley on the catch and run. It just seemed like, Danny, the first couple of series, there was such a good rhythm yeah. and a good balance, too. There was. And part of what happens, too, is right on the other side of the ball, Liberty's defense, they're, they're trying to make adjustments. They're trying to see what, what they can do. The last couple of plays, they dialed up a little more pressure where they're moving people around a little bit and kind of getting the offensive line confused just a bit and putting pressure on Josh. Christian Gibson back in at running back. He has three carries for 31 yards. RPO downfield, juggled and incomplete. Tony Nicholson could not snare it. Man, that's tough. And, and you know what? That almost turned into a, um, into a big play going the other way as well. Hits him in the hands, a little bit off balance, and he's juggling it. He's got great hands. I haven't seen much of that before, but let's see what happens. Great pass. Up in the air just a bit. Just couldn't reel it in. Chris Meganson was there in coverage for Liberty. DJ Stubbs is back deep. Awaiting the punt from Theisler. His second punt tonight. Had three punts for 50 plus last week. He's having a great year. This one will backspin a little bit before it's touched by the Yankees and Rodney McGraw. So good field position for Liberty following the 39 yard punt for Theisler. You know, that's, uh, that's tough but when you have a, a play like the punt return um, where you thought you'd be down to their inside the red zone and all of a sudden now you're back in your own territory trying to make something happen. You go three and out, punt the ball, and you're leaving Liberty in good field position here. Buckshot Calvert is thrown for only 60 so far for his head coach, Hugh Freeze. He entered action tonight 242 yards shy of 10,000 for his career. There's only been one 10,000-yard passer in program history for Liberty. Slings it out to DJ Stubbs, and that one was a little high, but pretty much on target, and Stubbs could not make the catch. Yeah, he did, and they were going to get some extra yardage with that one as well. So a little play action, and then just dumped it out quickly out there and went right through his hands. We don't have seen a lot of that happening on the Liberty side, but right through. Aggies dropped a couple. See, Liberty's dropping a couple here. Right now it is Shamad Lomax, who has matched up with Antonio Gandy-Golden, the star wide receiver. On the ground, here is Hickson. Flag is thrown as Hickson crosses the 20. He's into the end zone for Liberty. But a flag is down, and the Aggies are pointing in the direction of the O-line yeah. for Liberty. Xander Yarbrough is calling his team back. He yeah. said it's on there. So here's what usually happens, right? So when you have someone that breaks that free and you have Aggies standing around there, there's usually a hold or something in there that creates that big opening right there. So there's a big gap. Holding right. offense, number 56, 10-yard penalty, repeat, first that second down. So it's holding on Dante Duff, the right guard, who's making his 31st career start tonight. A lot of penalties for both, and now there's some jawing back and forth, too. So some big plays on both sides have been called back because of penalties. Long run of 36 for Huntley for the Aggies, a long punt return for Clark, and now this long touchdown run for Hickson. Zach Fouts, who was injured earlier, is back in at tight end. Running back is main transfer Joshua Mack. Play clock is at one. Liberty is forced to call a timeout. Liberty Confusion on Liberty's side of things. First timeout of the half. I, know, I see what they're doing, you know, and what, what the defense coordinator is trying to do is look, trying to get a peek because they haven't been able to figure out where the Aggies are coming from with pressure. So that's why they little stall and then see where they're coming from and then dial up another play, but they just ran out of time. 
third meeting between these two programs in a 24-month stretch. They met twice last year. They're going to meet again later on this year. That'll be November 30th in Lynchburg. Before last year, this was never done, Danny, at the FBS level. It was done once at the FCS level in 98, but it had never been done at the FBS level where you have two teams meeting twice in the same year, and it's done for the second straight year. There's a lot of familiarity between these two programs. There is, and I think we heard, I think during one of your shows with Coach Martin, he talks about uh, how he's going to address that, and first and one he says is win it any way you can. Second one, kind of change it up a bit a little. Yeah, he said you try to win this first one any way possible. Mack gets the call, still on his feet. He's a big guy, tough to take down. Came in with 247 running yards for the year. He gets four yards as he pushes the pile a little bit. Matt Young's been out there a bunch again. He was great last week. Yeah, Matt Young came screaming on the scene last week and did a really great job. And you can see that he's in there getting a lot more playing time. You see your defensive line trying to hold their gaps to have some gap integrity is what they call that to make sure no one pushes them around. Liberty 0 for 4 on a third down. Run pass option. The Aggies sniff it out. Hodge misses the tackle. But Liberty is still shy of the original line of scrimmage on a third down and long. So they're going to have to punt again. They are. You know, the defense is seeing everything, Adam. They're, they weren't fooled one bit there. And in addition to not being fooled, he comes off that block, and he really is right there at the point of attack. And you can see it there at the top of the screen. It's going to be a quick little pass to the outside there. Hodge not fooled one second. The rest of the team, oh, we got four, five, six, seven Aggies standing around there. Gang tackling. I love it. Danny, we always knew this defense had talent. And they're showing that this week. They showed that last week. We're starting to see them gel yeah. here early on in the year. And it, you can just feel the energy from that defense. The punt again from Aiden Alvis. O.J. Clark telling his guys to get out of the way. Not a great punt there for Alvis. Let's see if the Aggie offense can generate some points. We did not expect a score like this, especially with how well the Aggie offense was playing the first two possessions of this game, but no points to show. Running game's been good. Gibson's been good. Huntley's been good. Passing game has struggled, which is rare for this pass-heavy offense. You know, and it just seems like there's a lot of mistakes being made on both sides of the ball, and that's what's keeping the score low. You've had drop passes. You've got penalties. You've got two picks. There's just a lot of things going on on both sides that are just not allowing any team to get the, uh, the uh, advantage. Interception, interception, punt, punt. The four possessions for the Aggies, and a flag comes in once again. Yes. Trying to get Reggie the number Smith right. Smith is our referee. Personal foul. Hands to the face, defense number 11. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, that's a break. That's called on Jesse Lemonier. You know, they've been moving uh, Lemonier around quite a bit, and he's a low man. He's tough at 6'3", 240. I've seen him pushing around, but they got him coming in, and he'd stand up, and he'd move to the middle. He'd rush from the edge. In this case, they just got a uh, kind of a face to the hands of the face. You see him on the left of your screen right there. He's up against uh, Guerrero. Well, that's just as good as a big play. Huntley motions to the left of Atkins. Four penalties on Liberty, five penalties on the Aggies. And Atkins goes down. Lemonier, right after the penalty, comes right back to the quarterback. Five and a half sacks, top 15 in the country. You know, that, that's tough. And I think they're just trying to freeze him because they certainly didn't have anyone picking him up. It's a run pass. So you see the linemen, they're blocking run as you do in a run pass option. But there's nothing happening right there. It's a good thing that uh, Josh just takes care of the ball in those situations. Two sacks now for Liberty, including that one from Lemonier. Nearly intercepted, wow. but it's caught into Liberty territory by O.J. Clark. Linebacker Salomon Ajayi almost picked it off. Adam, remember you asked about, we were talking about in one of the breaks about, you know, I wonder if Josh's confidence, it could affect him one way, which it can, because when you throw two picks back to back, it makes it hard. 
Clearly not. He stood up there and did a great job. Nothing there in that run for Huntley. Ajayi was leading the charge. The brother, uh, former NFL running back, Jay Ajayi. One yard loss for Huntley. Three nothing Liberty. Low scoring affair here tonight at Aggie Memorial or homecoming. Whistle before the snap, flag thrown. Full start, offense, all players were not set for a second. Five yard penalty, it's second down. Danny, this is frustrating too because this is the healthiest the offensive line has been yeah. in a while. Yeah, well, first of all, what they're trying to do is they're trying to go on a quick count and you go on a quick count when you want to get the, uh, the defensive line kind of off, off track a little bit so to push them back a little and you try to jump a little quick. In this case, it was way too quick. Six penalties though, Adam. That, that you just can't, it's hard to win ball games like that. And that's after only three penalties last week. Huntley stops on his own tracks and then gets taken down by three white jerseys. Some big carries early for Huntley and now the Flames are starting to figure it out a little bit. They are. There was nothing there and I know Jason tried to make as much. You, you know, the, the thing is they've been running him hard and, and it gets tiring. So if you look at this play and he's trying to get the edge, can't get the edge, but look at the pursuit, the backside pursuit from Liberty's there. There's just nothing and nowhere he could go. The Aggies need the 40 of Liberty. Atkins going deep, incomplete for Robert Downs the third. Young man who did not play last week because of an ankle injury back this week, just beyond his reach. Yeah, that's a tough pass right there. And the confidence that Josh has to step in the pocket and throw it up over one defender, underneath another, and just almost very close. So the offensive struggles continue. And that just means more and more pressure on this Aggie defense against a good Liberty offense that just hasn't played well because of how good the defense has been. Third punt from Theisler. Last one was a short one of 39 yards. This one a little better. Stubbs calls for a fair catch inside the 15. And that's where this Liberty offense will start with 425 left in the second quarter. You know, Theisler's been punting great, and you need a good punter to get you out and flip the field, as they say. He has certainly flipped the field here and is a great punt. Well, the Aggies have been close to forcing some turnovers. They don't have one yet. They've committed two. That gives the Aggies 16 turnovers now this year, and they've only forced three. So that is a minus 13 turnover margin, which, of course, is not very good. Here's Hickson trying to find a hole. Taken down from behind by defensive back Jason Simmons Jr. Yeah, you don't want Hickson to break into the third level into that secondary because you saw what he could do on that one play where they ended up calling it back. But he's got some jets, he's got some speed, so you gotta make sure you gotta keep him corralled. Good first down, a run of seven. Rolling right is Calvert. Calvert throws it to the sideline, and the pass is incomplete. So you see kind of what coach, is, uh, coach, coach Freeze is trying to do now, a little bit different. So instead of sitting back in the pocket and having the Aggies come dial up some blitz that Coach spaziani has been doing a great job on, in this case, he's going to roll them out to hopefully give him some more time to throw the ball. But it's, a, you know, maybe not quite what he's used to, so uh, makes it uh, tough. Liberty has not converted yet on a third down. The Aggies miss on the tackle, and Hickson reaches for the first down. If they got him initially, it was going to be well short of the first down yardage needed. It was Cedric Wilcox who almost got him. You know, when you're coming off the edge that fast and, that's hard, and that hard, it's hard to get your arm across there, and I know he's got some big, strong arms to stop that. Uh, momentum right away. There's a good tackle for Rashi Hodge Ooh. Jr. Glendale Community College transfer. Yeah, I'm, that's a great tackle right there because if Hodge doesn't make that tackle, I think he's off to the races to the outside, Adam. So that was a great tackle right there. 
Aggies are tackling much better. Struggled in that area the first couple weeks, albeit some really good competition. Running back is Hickson again. They give this to Hickson. Gets to the third level to Shimon Lomax, but he's still going to be about three yards shy of the first down. So another third down and three for Liberty. They just converted on third and three. The Aggies looking for a stop with 2.50 left. You know, Lomax makes that tackle, and that's a tough tackle in the open field there. And you got to break down because there's a lot of things that can happen, but he keeps his composure. He breaks down and makes a fantastic tackle. Swing it out to Damian King, passes incomplete. The Aggies almost jumped. Did you see that on the defensive line? All right. Side. Defense did. number 95. Yeah. That's a five yard penalty and results in a first down. So they did jump. And that was big, Jamias Williams. Yeah, right there. Seven penalties. A lot on the ground for Liberty during this possession. This is Joshua Mack into Aggie territory. Healthy dose of Hickson and Mack. Gain of 21 for Mack. You know, you got this little draw coming back in there, a little, little uh, pulling of the tight end coming across the middle there. Clears the inside. Big run. Mack runs again. Gets nine yards, brings up second down and one. Here's Mack again, so patient. Both him and Hicks and Danny really patient, waiting for their blockers and waiting to find some holes. I keep waiting in certain situations where he's uh, so patient, he gets into the pile and, they, and he's still running and moving that for someone to reach in there and pull that ball out there, strip that thing, create a turnover. Four out wide for Liberty. Calvert will throw this time as he completes the pass to Antonio Gandy-Golden. Takes three guys to get him down. Lomax has done a good job, it seems like, in coverage. That is only Gandy-Golden's second catch. It's, did you see how fast Shamad came up on him? He came up on him and got his arms all the way around him. And he's, uh, he's done a great job out there because Gandy-Golden is not a small guy, and he is a NFL caliber receiver. Aggie head coach Doug Martin said earlier this week that Calvert and Gandy Golden, both NFL talents. Offside with contact defense number 99. Five yard penalty, it's first down. And that penalty is called on Miles Veen, the nose tackle from New Orleans. It was actually Buckley, they called it Arnveen. They said 99, but it was Buckley. Yeah, they had the wrong jersey number, but they've been busy, Reggie Smith and his crew. Mack, still on his feet. And a player is down in the Aggie timeout. backfield, and a player is down two players. in the Liberty backfield. You know, as thin as we are, we can't uh, can't have anyone hurt, but we don't certainly uh, didn't see what happened. Miles Veen is the man down for the Aggies. Slow to get up for Liberty. Is Sam Isaacs in there, right tackle, who's from Lynchburg. Isaacson was kind of twisted up by Veen, so those yeah. two guys were matching up with each other. And there is no foul, tangled. there is no option for a 10 second runoff because players from both teams were injured. The clock will start on the ready for play. Under a minute left here in quarter two, the Aggies will get the ball to start the third quarter. It's been a really interesting first half. A lot of penalties, two Aggie turnovers at crucial times. And not a ton from the Liberty offense, which has been potent this year. Calvert swings it out to Damian King, 
On the sideline, he is pushed out of bounds by Arashi Hodge Jr. All the way down to the five yard line with 34 seconds left to go. Man, there's a lot of intensity on the field on those blocks. They're trying to get rid of the block and those Liberty uh, the receivers are trying to hold on to that block as hard as possible. Quick toss to the outside, go get some positive yards there. You'll see the Ags come screaming in there. Man, they're trying to dig their heels and not let them in before the quarter. Yeah, if you're the Aggie defense and you can hold Liberty to three, that would be huge right here. First and goal from the five yard line. Pistol back is Hickson. Look out for Gandy Golden, top side of your screen. They're looking for him. Calvert has to escape, and he dives towards the goal line. He is down at the two. They were looking for Gandy Golden, Danny, but he had no time to throw. No, no whatsoever. And he grabbed that ball, took it in, and he went uh, quickly. seconds. So two teams that at times this year have been good on offense, not a whole lot. 154 for Liberty, 134 for the Yankees. And this is what we were talking about earlier. NM State and Liberty, they're going to meet twice this year in the regular season. That November 30th matchup in Lynchburg is going to be the season finale for the Yankees. Met twice last year. It happened at the FCS level in 98, UMass and UConn. Uh, so this is rare. And the two campuses are separated by almost 2,000 miles, so it's not like Lynchburg, Virginia is close to here. This is a long trek for you, Hugh Freeze and Liberty. There you see Coach Sukup, he's a linebacker Raiders coach. Certainly an intense guy. There we the are, Adam, clock. trying to get our guys to dig their heels in. Reset the game clock to 27 seconds. Our broadcast view Reset here at Aggie Memorial. Reset the clock to 25 seconds. I'll blow it again. 27 seconds. Calverts. Touchdown. Tight end Zach Fouts. His first touchdown catch this year. They were looking Antonio Gandy Golden's way and they went to Fouts. It's hard here, a little play action, got to run past, and you sneak the tight end right into the flats, and there's not much they needed, just a quick toss. So Liberty able to get some points. First touchdown of this game right before halftime. Point after from Probert. 10 nothing. I know it's hard to say you'll take it after Liberty scores points right before halftime, Danny, but with the way the Aggies have played offensively in the first half, if you're only trailing by 10 and you get the ball to start the third, that's pretty good. I think so. I, I think they've done some good things here. The defense, they get they get a TD and they, they worked hard, but the defense has done their their share of work this uh, this half, right? This first half and really hold them. Shamad Lomax there on 22, you can see he's kind of put his head down. He's got nothing to uh, put his head down about. He's doing a great job. The offense needs to get going, Adam. Yeah, check this out. Liberty's averaging 26 points per game, yet they only have 10 in the first half. Despite a couple of Aggie turnovers, Liberty trying to go to four and two. They're trying to win their fourth in a row. Aggies are trying to dodge an 0-6 start. There are 22 seconds left. Let's see if they kick to Huntley here in the, the final 22 seconds of the half. They did kick to him earlier. Here it comes to Huntley. And he will take a knee. Well, you never know. We saw the Aggies a couple weeks ago, Danny in a short time frame when that offense was really clicking. Score some points right before halftime against UNM on a touchdown catch for Nicholson, a big play by Navion Mitchell during that drive. You do have some time left and you have three timeouts remaining. Yep, 22 seconds. I'm, I'm not sure that's enough to do anything with, but we'll see. Certainly, um, you're gonna start looking at uh, plays on your play sheet that you haven't got to yet to see if you can't trick someone, get them out of position and create a big play. Jason Huntley, first down run. Huntley trying to get to the outside and get out of bounds. He does. 
And they're going to mark him out at the 30. So Huntley gets five yards, and it takes off seven seconds, 15 seconds left. All three timeouts left for the Aggies. Adam, I wonder how many yards Jason Huntley has running side to side. I mean, he has a good positive yards, and he's trying to get the A's, but he, he there's a lot of yardage that from side to side, too. Huntley again. Huntley running near side of the field. And he gets out of bounds with nine seconds left. And a flag is down. Holding Ouch. offense number two. Ten-yard penalty. It's second down. So that's called on O.J. Clark. Doug Martin furious. Not with O.J., but with the officiating. Well, that probably pretty much does it, Danny, for yep. this with just nine seconds yeah, left. Let's see if we can't see anything right there. That's tough. I mean, it could go either way. A lot of yards for Huntley have been taken back because of penalties so far in this game. Huntley again rumbles past the 30. And the Yankees will not this stop the This is the end of the first half. A little skirmish between O.J. Clark and Salomon Ajayi just before halftime. 10-0 the oh, score. Oh, there's flags flying. And right now, Liberty trying to get Ajayi off the field. Let's wait here because we'll see if referee Reggie Smith will sort it out. You have to wonder if there might be something here against Ajayi. After the end of the half, unsportsmanlike conduct, Liberty, number 14, that's his first. The 15-yard penalty will be enforced in the third quarter. That's the end of the first half. Wow, that's big. Yeah, that is huge right there. Liberty will kick off to start the third, and that means Jason Huntley might get a return to start the third quarter. Head coach Doug Martin is with us. Coach, your thoughts in the first half? Well, I mean, defensively, we're playing really well. We're just not making any plays in offense. You know, Josh has really not played very well at all. He's had a lot of opportunities to make some throws and just hasn't made them. Yeah, Coach Danny, need defense is uh, doing a really good job so far. Defense is playing well. You know, we just got to help them. We got to get some points. You know, you can't win if you don't score. All right, Coach, thanks so much. Aggie head coach Doug Martin, 10 0 the score at halftime here at Aggie Memorial Stadium. Big penalty, though, to finish off that first half on Ajayi. We'll have halftime after this. Aggies looking for a second half comeback. Flames looking for their fourth straight win. Trying to win their first road game this year. The last two years for the Flames, eight and two at home, one and six on the road. Their offense didn't do a ton in that first half, but it was enough to take a 10-0 lead at halftime. Turnovers, penalties, that's kind of the story right now, Danny. Yeah, you look at the stats there, total yards, pretty close right now. Passing yards, close, rushing, pretty close. So where's the difference? The difference is the penalties and the turnovers, and Coach knows that. As you can tell from our halftime interview, he wasn't so happy. Can't say that I blame him. you got to fix it, but this is a new half, Adam. So the slates wiped clean. Here we go. And while we have a moment, I want to say big happy birthday. 90th birthday for Joe Mocha, who is watching tonight at his home in Phoenix. He's the father of athletics director Marty Omocha. Big Aggie supporter. Comes to a lot of games during the course of the year. Always good to catch up with him and his wife. So happy 90th birthday. He is happy. He is healthy. Joe Mocha. I, I love it. 90. Congratulations. Happy birthday. I'm glad you're with us. His son's office is in that building right there on the first floor. Marty Omocha, who's having his usual AD party at the uh, porch just outside his office. Mario Mocha, the AD, has done a phenomenal job with this athletics department. There's Hugh Freeze. I know he's not happy with his offense. They scored 10, but it was a tough 10 to get to. 
Yeah, that was. It, ten, ten points doesn't seem like that much. It seems like there was a lot more going on in that first half, Adam, and there should be more points, right? But all this went on, and then you had turnovers, you had penalties, you had picks, you had everything, and the score is only 10 to nothing. So it, being persistent on offense, you know, what do they tell basketball players when they don't hit it? You got to keep shooting. You got to do the same thing with football on the offensive side. You got to stay persistent. Freeze, the former head coach at Ole Miss and Arkansas State, was hired in December of 2018. Dealing with that back surgery, so he is still in a lot of pain, having a coach from the platform, what he calls his NASCAR pit box on Liberty sideline. Prombert will kick off. Remember, there was the personal foul penalty on Ajayi before halftime that is enforced on this kickoff, so the Yagis should get a good return in good field position. Jason Huntley has five career kick return touchdowns. The record at the FBS level is seven. He had one last year against Liberty. Huntley down the sideline, good field position across the 30. So the penalty does help, and the Aggies will start at the 32-yard line. You know, I like that decision. You, know, you weren't going to set it up. You weren't going to run it back. You couldn't trick them to get the corner. It's hard when you have the record and everyone knows that you can return them for a touchdown to just kick the ball to you and, and no one be on alert. The officials are conversing. There was a flag on the play. Referee tonight, a busy man, is Reggie Smith. Offside, kicking team. Five-yard penalty, free kick. Oh, wow. Well, that's big. Push him back even further. Another chance for Huntley. He's not used to this. He's licking his chops near his own 15-yard line. He is. You know, the, the thing also, though, what happens is that you're, you're running back, and this takes a lot out of you, and so now you're going to go back there and you're going to do it again. However, if you can run one back, it's all for it. So they're back 20 yards if you combine the personal foul penalty right before halftime, and now the five-yard offsides penalty on Liberty. That means Probert is pushed back 20 total yards as he has to kick off to one of the most dangerous return men around the country. You know, that's 15 penalties on the night, if I, if I have math right there. But, you, you know, that is a lot already for one half of a play, a little over one half a play in total. Huntley two weeks ago against UNM in Albuquerque, two returns for 98 yards. His long this year is 71. He only had one return last week for three. Had a short return earlier tonight. Three kick return touchdowns last year in the final six games of the year, including the finale in Lynchburg against Liberty. And here it comes. Huntley from the 15. Watch this man fly. Huntley taken down. And if he breaks that, who knows? Yeah. That was close. A hey, good field position, though. Good return, good field position. So this should help the struggling Aggie offense that just could not get much going after the first two possessions, which resulted in interceptions. But before the interceptions, they were good drives that were leading to points. Josh Atkins, 5 of 10. Last week, he was 26 of 46 for three picks. He has two picks so far. Let's see if the Aggies can establish the run again. That's the fourth carry for Gibson. Oh. Another flag. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 11, 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. That's two penalties on star defensive end Jesse Lemonier in this game. If we can't see what happened in there. Tried to get the, yeah, got a fistful right there and just couldn't get his hand out in time. Penalties really hurting Liberty as well, especially on this Aggie drive. They fake the handoff to Gibson. Atkins indecisive again. He slides. The Aggie fans and the Aggie sideline thought maybe a flag should come in. Like the decision, right? So you get a little run pass. You, nothing happening on the run piece. You look up for the pass. Nothing is there. Everyone's covered. You instantly go get as many yards as you can. I like the decision. The Aggies averaging over four yards per rush. 
Adkins back to throw underneath, completes the pass to Navion Mitchell. Good enough for a first down. Flag came in again. Personal foul, targeting defense number seven. The previous play is under further review. All right, so targeting is the call. They're going to review it. It's on Tavion Land, the freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia, in the secondary for the Flames at the safety position. Yeah, I didn't see it at all. I, I saw the blitz that came. Let's see if we can't see anything at the end there. I'm not sure what to make of that, Adam. I'm ho-hum. Is there something? Look at the blitz. So that's going to be a telltale for the second half. They are not going to let Josh sit back there, but they're on the pass. That's where they called the targeting. Yeah, that's kind of 50-50, I think. Yeah. There are sure a lot of penalties. Yeah, and it's been on both sides, too. Yeah. It's not like this Liberty offense has been humming during the course of this game to score 10 points. They've had some help, and penalties have played a role on both sides. The one thing Liberty has done that the Aggies haven't done is take care of the football. Liberty has not committed a turnover. The Aggies have committed two. If you flip that, it's a different game. Reggie Smith is the busiest man tonight in Aggie Memorial Stadium. And this is an Aggie team. Speaking of penalties on the Aggie side, they only committed three last week. Early on this year, they were one of the least penalized teams around the country. I just don't see much there, Danny. No. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Number seven may remain in the game. The result of the play is first and 10. All right, so no targeting on land. He gets to stay in the game. That's big for Liberty. But there's one thing that did come from that uh, pass that we've noticed. Well, a couple plays here is that I can see that uh, the, the adjustment is going to be made by Liberty. They are not going to let Josh sit back there and be happy. They're going to come get him. They're not going to let him be comfortable, almost like the Aggies did a buckshot in the first half. First and 10 for Atkins. Flings it out to O.J. Clark. Stops in his tracks, makes a move, cuts up field across the 20. Quality yards after catch for O.J. And here's what happens. They come with a blitz again to try to get in Josh's face right away. Josh recognizes one, two, ball is out. O.J. picks it up. He throws a nice move there. That's called over pursuing, and he picks up five extra yards. Nice job by O.J. 18-yard connection. Huntley on the ground, slips out of a tackle. Initially, Elefante had him. Huntley slips out of it. You know, those, it's going to bring up second down. Those yards right there are hard running yards. When someone has your you know, jersey and they have your neck and you're still able to push that forward and get some extra yards, those are tough three yards or four yards right there. Might have only been one or two initially. Or Jason Huntley, I should say, gets four out of it. And Atkins will run to the left, taken down from behind by linebacker Salomon Ajayi. Okay, so now we're now we're moving. Now we have a little rhythm, got some uh, running action going. It's going to be a little tough to throw the ball down here. Uh, last time they dialed up someone new coming out of the backfield that you didn't see before. So uh, I don't know if you're coach, do you go back to pass or do you just stay with the run? I, I think you have to throw the ball, even though it's risky, but I think you have to. Third down and a long four. Running back is Huntley. In motion was Nicholson. Adkins back to throw. Atkins taken down, flag comes in as well. And that's probably going to be holding. Personal foul, hands to the face. Offense number 54. That's a 15-yard penalty. We play third down. Well, you would have taken holding that scenario. It's yeah. hands to the face on Mercelot. I see a Mercelot at left guard. And uh, that is going to be a 15-yard penalty. That's a big blow. 
Man, these penalties, have re we've really just shot ourselves in the foot with these Rexy. penalties. Liberty see if we like can't to decline see it. the foul. It's fourth down. What was the uh, spot at the end? So it looks like Liberty is going to decline the penalty to bring up fourth down. So they decline the penalty. No, Adam, I was going to say, do we go for it when it was yeah. when it was fourth and short? But clearly after that penalty and all of that that took place, you kick it, you take the points and get something on the board, something positive. Dylan Brown from 33 yards. Four for seven this year. Missed to make it a one possession game. And it's good. That's a big kick. Last week he missed from 50, made from 42. Bangs this one through from 33 yards, and the Aggies have points. It's 10 to 3. Well, that's the most important thing there, right? So you get something positive happen. You had all these penalties that you're going to take advantage of, and if you don't, that's a missed opportunity, but they didn't miss it. They ended up getting some points out of it, so that helps us keep rolling. And if the defense plays as well as they did in the first half, Danny, you might not need to score a whole lot with how good yep. the defense was in the first 30 minutes. So now it's on the defense. So now you get some points, you have something positive happening. Now you got to get the defense fired up. You know, coming in off halftime, it's really hard to get back on the field and play at the same emotional level that you left with before. But it's important that they don't let anything pass by, that they start at that same high emotional level that they did in the first half. They need to do that in order to uh, get a three and out and turn it back over to the offense. Seven plays, 46 yards. The result, a 33-yard field goal for Dylan Brown. Drive up three minutes. And now Brown will kick off for just the second time here tonight. Deke kickoff into the end zone. This one is taken out by Lewis. And Lewis is driven backwards. Wow. So he takes it out probably about six or seven yards deep. They would have had the ball at the 25-yard line. Instead, it's the 18 as striking the Wonder Dog retrieves the tee. Here's the return right here. It looked like we had him the first time, gave him a big pop, but didn't wrap up, and he didn't stop. He just kept going and almost turned it into something really positive. The cheer for striking. <laughs> Steven Buckshot Calvert, 9 of 18 for 85 yards and a touchdown. Stretch handoff goes to Frankie Hickson. Right now, the Flames on the ground averaging 3.9 per rush. And surprisingly, Liberty hasn't thrown the ball a ton, Danny. It, it hasn't, but I think it's kind of almost scary, too, because you have to make sure that you watch your guys and don't get lulled into thinking they're just going to run the ball because he'll pull it out and throw that thing. Quiet night for Antonio Candy Golden, the star wide receiver. Calvert's going to throw. Looking deep, he's looking for Stubbs. Almost caught it. Great coverage out there. That was great coverage. And you know, Buckshot saw the saw the uh, rush coming in, saw the blitz off the edge. He knew it was happening. You can see it on the right side of your screen right there. He just tried to stay in there as long as he could. But when you get your hands up on the quarterback, he has to throw it over your hands and still negotiate where the receiver is and makes it very tough. Keep in mind, too, Jason Simmons Jr. is only a freshman. He's playing at a very high level right now. Calvert, first down, barely just enough yardage to one of his tight ends, Jerome Jackson, the big man from Fort Worth. That will move the chains barely. Liberty had struggled on a third down. They were one of six on a third down before that. Pressure from the front side by Rashi Hodge Jr. They complete the pass. That's Damian King, redshirt senior out of St. Petersburg, Florida. Picks up five yards. Simmons on that tackle is phenomenal. He comes screaming in there. He knows they got a blitz drawn up. So they're coming in off the edge, and he knows he's got to come support that from a safety position, and he comes screaming in there. Does a great job. 
Simmons only a freshman. He's out of Lancaster, Texas. His father is the defensive backs coach for the Packers. Incomplete. Albert was looking for King again. They're not even really looking no. at Antonio Gandy-Gold. No, I think they're just trying to get the ball out quickly. Adam, I keep looking for one of these times where they're going to tip that ball up in the air on the line of scrimmage or on a blitz, and someone else is going to pick that thing. You know, you just got to keep in there and get your hands up and try to deflect anything that comes off there. There's the man right there you can't lose track of. They call him AGG. He only has three catches so far. Came in with 30 catches in the first five games. Some confusion here for Calvert. Play clock is down to five. They need a hurry. Down to two. They get it off, one second to spare. Long throw going backwards was Gandy Golden and the Yagis take him down short of the first down marker. Wow. Unless they give him forward I think progress. Give him forward. They give him forward progress, enough for the first down by a yard. Interesting spot. Mm, yeah, it is a little bit. He's a low to tackle, 6'4", 220. Right up the gut, big hole there for Frankie Hickson, the redshirt senior from Lynchburg, who gains nine on the first down run. Got an Aggie down there. Officials timeout for an injured player. That's Austin Perkins, who's played so well this year in his first year as a full-time starter. Senior from Tucson, Arizona. Well, he came flying up to make that tackle. Getting to play this year with his older brother, Brandon, coaching as a first-year grad assistant on the defense for the Yankees. I think that's awesome. Cool moment for them. That is. Hope he gets back. So with Perkins out, Chance Cook comes in at free safety, the Oklahoma State transfer. King on the jet sweep. That won't work, but a flag comes in. It worked against the Aggies last week for Fresno State on a 79-yard touchdown run of the jet sweep. Face mask, defense number 88. 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. And that's a face mask penalty on Xander Yarborough right here. Get those big paws out there, and they just get tangled in that face mask. Uh, yes. Ten. Eleven penalties, Adam. Uh, Hard to win games when you commit 11 penalties, and we still have nine minutes plus left in the third and two turnovers. That's just a lot of errors for the Yagis in two big categories. King won't get the ball in the jet sweep this time. Hickson again on the ground. Bulk of the carries tonight have come for Frankie Hickson. Two yard pickup on his 10th carry. 49 yards on the ground for Hickson. Yeah, I think we said it once before, but you got to keep Hickson kind of corralled and don't let him get into the open territory. There's Cook. He's going to get a chance to play here. And, uh, hey, sometimes that's all you need is just one chance. Something happens, you get in there, and you make a name for yourself. Antonio Gandy-Golden, bottom side of the screen now. Calvert is rolling to the near side. He fires overthrown, looking for King. Once again, not targeting Gandy-Golden. I think when they're rolling to their side, I think Hodge came screaming in again, and they just continue to put pressure in his face. Big third down right here, Adam. Big third down. Jared Phipps is covering Gandy Golden. Phipps is only 5'9", Gandy Golden 6'4". Four out wide for the Flames on a third down and eight. Calvert incomplete. Coverage from Shaman Lomax. Boy, Shaman Lomax is playing a great game there. He sat on that thing. He saw that all day long. And Buck, Buckshot looks left. 
comes back. There he's looking left. He comes back to Shamad Lomax. Shamad breaks on the ball as soon as it's released, and he knows he's going to knock that thing out. That's just great defense right there. Good job. This will be about a 51-yarder for Probert. He missed from 50 earlier. He's two for five this year. The kick is up and it is good. 51 yards away, season long for the redshirt junior from Andover, Maryland. And those are some big points for Liberty. 13 to three flames, midway through quarter three. And a mistake coming off their best defensive game of the season. Playing pretty well again tonight, our defense holding Liberty to 13, but the Flames lead by 10. Want to get your degree and stay debt free? With the New Mexico Army National Guard, you can get paid to be a full-time student. Join the Guard and be a part-time soldier and earn a college degree. Visit NationalGuard.com to learn more. Adam Young alongside Danny Nee. Great to have you with us here tonight. Adam, that was a great series on defense for the Ags. Mm -hmm. You know, holding them to three there. The problem is, is that you can't volley three for three. You have to, because you're down a little bit, so you have to be able to put some TDs in there. You got to get in the end zone. Probert kicking away. Huntley and Mitchell deep, and this one is through the end zone for a touchback. 13 to three, Liberty leads by 10. The Aggies trying to mount a comeback at home on homecoming. Josh Atkins back to work when we return. Eight minutes plus left in the third, 13 to three, Liberty on homecoming. Tonight's game is brought to you by the New Mexico Department of Agriculture, Farm Bureau Financial Services, and the New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau. Adam Young and Danny Nee with you. And Danny, this feels like a really big offensive possession coming up. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I, I think going three for three back and forth is not going to win you the game. So somehow you got to break loose. You got to make some big plays. And it's tough when you have so many penalties. We got 10 penalties, 65 yards. Keep shooting ourselves in the foot. You got to have one of these break, though. You just got to keep pressing, though. Keep pressing. Only four carries for Christian Gibson, but he's gone for 30 plus. He's in the backfield right now with Josh Atkins. Atkins back to throw. Atkins across the middle to Tony Nicholson. Nicholson holds in his second catch of the day. Three touchdowns in his previous two. He's been the go-to guy for Atkins. Yeah, certainly just like our open, we said, hey, here's the guy that we're gonna go, here's the guy who's gonna go to it. It's coming back in with a little post in there. Comes underneath, grabs it, hangs on to the football. They're trying to yank it free, but Josh is doing a good job. You got to just keep marching down the, down the field, and you can't be afraid to throw the ball. Atkins will motion out Gibson. He will keep it and run as he rumbles towards midfield for a pickup of a half dozen. Aggies coming off the possession with their first points of the night on a 33-yard made field goal for Dylan Brown. This is Huntley again, who got off to a great start in the game, had some big plays early, and he is picked up and dropped by Elijah Benton, who came into this game leading the Flames in tackles. I somehow think they're spying him a little bit. After the first half, it's like, do not let him get outside. In that case, that, that little gift to him, there's nothing there. There's three guys standing there, so they're watching him. But that's okay because that means you're going to pull the ball out and look for something coming across the middle there. Third down and one. The Aggies oh. need the 50, and they jumped. Ball start. Offense, multiple players. Five-yard penalty, third down. So third and one turns into third and six. Not just one, but a lot that jumped on that one. Need the 50. And they get the 50. He had some more. 
Isaiah Lottie with his first catch of the ball game. He gets nine. He only needed six. You know, we haven't called Isaiah Lottie's name too much. Comes across the middle there. He's in a lot of traffic right there. He gets the catch, hangs on, and look at him just make sure that ball is not stripped out. Lottie had 11 catches in the previous three games. This one to Navy on Mitchell. Can he break the tackle? He does. Oh. Lowers his shoulder, reaches for the first down marker, and he gets it. I like it. You know, it, a lot of things bad pe things can happen, but people say when you keep trying to get the extra yards, but when you're down and you're trying to press to make something, you got to keep it and just keep trying and look at them, just keep driving in there for extra yardage. Second catch for Navion Mitchell. Two catches for 15 yards after that 10 yard pickup. Atkins looking to his sideline for the play call. Four out wide, running back Huntley. Screen pass to Lottie. Good block out wide. That was Jared Wyatt who applied the block. A good one to get Lottie free. Jared Wyatt, talk to you about Jared Wyatt. Lives in a little town next to us there in Wiley, Texas. On the point of attack, you see the block there. Occupies him and gets Lottie free to break to the outside. Nice job there. And we're moving. And on a night where there's been so many penalties, he did not hold on the block. Well done. <laughs> Three out wide, now they motion out Huntley. Atkins will tuck it and run after he pulled it out of the belly of Gibson. Good enough for the first down, they move the chains again. Three yard sneak by the young man out of Spring Branch, Texas, Smithson Valley High School, Josh Atkins. No, Josh isn't a small guy, 6'2", 218, so he's a tough, he's a tough hoss to get running in there. Doug Martin said last week, he said, Josh is running a lot better this year. And he's showing that again tonight. Throwing it deep, incomplete. In the vicinity right there was Nicholson, but he was just trying to get rid of it. He was open, he was there, but yeah, I think you're right. He was just trying to get rid of it. The quarterback was out of the pocket, second down. Yeah, they said no intentional, yeah, no grounding. intentional grounding. Just trying to get rid of the ball. It's a good decision. You know, even though Nicholson was free, but by the time you get out there, a lot of bad things can happen. Throws the ball out of bounds. Officials timeout for an injured player on the sideline. And there's an injured player right now just outside of the end zone. That is Emmanuel Dabney, who missed last week because of a hamstring injury, and you have to wonder if that's the issue again. I didn't even see him on that last play over there. They've had some issues recently injury-wise in the secondary, including Dabney. He'll walk off with some help, and the Aggies will continue their drive from the 25-yard line after this break. Welcome back to Aggie Memorial Stadium. And M State trailing Liberty 13 to 3, 434 left in the third. Time now for our New Mexico State student athletes of the game. Today we recognize Isaiah Lottie from Aggie Football and Nana Sule from Aggie Women's Hoops. Lottie is a 3-5 student in business administration, and Sule has a 3-9 GPA, majoring in business administration as well. New Mexico State University, be bold, shape the future. Lottie's been productive on this drive. Hey, way to go. Nicely done. You picked the right guy. High GPA. Had a great catch here. Here's Nicholson. Nicholson lowers his shoulder and shimmies through the line right there for Liberty. Another good job of yards after the catch for five yards. Yeah, quick toss outside. You're going to break him back to the inside. We see everyone picking up an extra block in some extra yards in there. Taking care of the football, too. I see two hands on the ball. That's what I like to see. You don't necessarily need to get seven right here, but you would like to get seven. Third down for Atkins. Atkins throws to the sticks, and Nicholson falls on the sticks. That's good enough for a first down. Hey, that's what you do whenever you want to see where the marker is. You just fall just on the fall sticks. fall right on top of it. Look at him just do a little hook in there and just sit, 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 wait. Nice catch. Down to the 15-yard line, Nicholson busy on this drive as well. Transfer 
from Baylor out of Grand Prairie, Texas, was a high school quarterback and defensive back. Went to Baylor initially as a DB. Nicholson's in motion. This is a pass for Nicholson. The former high school quarterback completes it in the end zone. No, they're going to say Abraham was out of bounds. Oh, how could that happen? Adam, and you set it up so nicely just talking about how he's a quarterback and how all the great things, and here he is. Set it up here, quick toss, stops, pulls up, and just dumps it. He just kind of got away from him just a little bit. Oh, He had his man. foot in. He, he had his foot in. You know, before the, before the game started. The is that the receiver caught the ball out of bounds in an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Danny, this might be a touchdown. This might be. You know, before the game started, I watched them work on catching the ball right near the end of the end zone, trying to drag their toes to get in bounds there. Now they ruled it, they ruled it a not a, out of bounds, right? No catch. So we got to make sure that if they are going to look at it, there's got to be enough evidence in there. Pretty good throw there by Nicholson. The Aggies have tried that a few times this year, that wide receiver pass. Not an easy throw for Nicholson because he has his glove on his right hand. Abraham was the man in the end zone who has not been targeted tonight until that throw by the wide receiver, Nicholson. Remember, in college football, you only need one foot, not two. The right foot is out. Left foot is what you're looking at. Did he have that left foot down? It appeared to be in. Was it down, though, when he caught it? You know, this pass did just drift just a little bit farther than I think he wanted. Danny, that's the angle. Yep. That's the angle. Yep. And he's dragging that left foot, too, right? It looked like from... I just don't know if there's enough to change it. It yeah. looks like there's a chance he caught it, but if there's a After chance review, and it's not, the for sure. on the field is confirmed. It's an incomplete yeah. pass. It'll be second and 10. Just too close, and you need enough evidence to overturn the call. You have to be for sure to change the call. Like the play call, though. Something different, you get down here, it's not just the same, same, it's something a lot different. And what that does is that puts Liberty on notice that we will pull out anything to, to uh, put one in the end zone and they need to get in that end zone. Second and 10 for the Aggie offense and Josh Atkins. Atkins to the sideline for Nicholson. Wrestled out of bounds. Waylon Kozad on the stop, junior from Auburn, California, after Nicholson gets seven. Third down and three. And if you're the Aggies here, you have to get greedy. Oh, absolutely. You need seven. You're this close. You've had so many chances from this distance during the course of the game. Atkins motions out, Huntley. Looks like the Aggies will be short. Late flag comes in. It was Gibson on the run. There were extracurriculars after the play. Well, Gibson's the guy you certainly want to pour in there because he's the big back that when he turns his shoulders, it squares him and goes in there. And there it is right there. It's down, and they're still pulling and yanking. And I, I just don't know what you throw the flag on him for that. And you know, I, I think Christian Gibson was probably saying, look, I, I'm down and they're still pulling on me and yanking on me, and I think that's why he got bent out of shape a bit. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 25 for a non-football act. That's his first 15-yard penalty from the dead ball spot, and it's fourth down. So... The question was going to be, Danny, would you go for it on fourth and one? Now you're going to kick the field a little. Yeah, you're going to get points. You're right. That was the big question that I know we were going to debate here. But now 
This one, you take the points. Yeah, that's tough. The last, the last penalty, I know everyone's, you know, a little tempers are getting hot and everything else, but isn't that more of the, let the guys battle it out there, not, nothing happened. They just talk to both and let them go. But here we go, field goal. 39 yard field goal try for Brown, who made from 33 earlier in the game, and this one is good. So who knows, maybe the Aggies would have kicked a field goal anyway on fourth and one. Not sure what Doug Martin would have done. But the Aggies do get points, only three, but now it's a one possession game again with 2.20 left in the third. Well, there's a lot of things that could happen, so you certainly don't want to press with fourth and long on that. Now, if it was fourth and one, I would have, I think I would have said, let's go for it. But, but here we are, we're gonna get, gonna get the field goal. It's a one possession game with 2.20 left in the third, so plenty of time, plenty of football. Two made field goals now for Dylan Brown, a 33-yarder earlier in the quarter, and now a 39-yarder. Here's a look at the upcoming games. Liberty will have a bye week and then play Maine, FCS program. Aggies will head on the road for three. Central Michigan, Georgia Southern, and Ole Miss with a couple of bye weeks mixed in. Central Michigan only won one game last year, much better this year under First-year head coach and former Florida head coach Jim McElwain. Georgia Southern, a 10-win team last year. They have not been as good this year. So the Aggies have had the ball twice in this third quarter, and both possessions have resulted in field goals. Brown kicking off to Lewis. And this one is through the end zone. Have you seen improvement by the offense in this half so far, Danny? I have. I, I absolutely have. I think there's a lot of things meshing. There's a lot of things working. You know, they haven't given up. And so good things happen when you just keep working hard. And uh, I, they're, they're working very tough. You know, Christian Gibson on that last carry. He is giving it everything, and he's been the guy that we give to between the tackles, right? Um, so I, I see a lot of improvement. Good catches, good blocking up front. They can stay away from the penalties. Now we need a stop on defense. Defense has been really good tonight, but no takeaways. This would be a perfect time for a turnover. Calvert fires near side of the field. Good yardage on first down for Henderson. You know, have Simmons coming over from the safety spot to kind of help out there, but uh, there's not, he has to come so far that they end up getting a pretty good yardage on that play. Yeah, ideally you'd look for one of those guys to shed that block up front there and, and uh, make a play. Pistol back is Mack. Give us to him, runs right into Matthew Young. At that money position on the Aggie defensive line, the son of former NFL star and former Aggie Fred Young, who's in the ring of honor here. Yeah, so every time I see that 44 dash in there, I, I know the first thing that's coming to my mind is like, hey, Fred, and it's not Fred. So I played with Fred. What an athlete. Matt is doing a great job. Came just storming on last weekend and continues. Fred's at the game tonight. He's at every single home game, still lives in town. Here's Mack to the left. Young in on the stop again alongside Ferguson, who tied for the team lead in the first half with six tackles. Third and three. Here we go. Coming in right off the edge there. You see the, the block that just kind of crushes down. And... Uh, Albert will take his time. Still 18 on the play clock. Approaching 30 seconds left in the third in a one possession game. Flames looking for their fourth win in a row. Aggies looking for their first win of the year. They motion out Mack. Calvert looking left slant. Good coverage. Poked away by Shamad Lomax. Wow. Is Shamad Lomax having a great game right there? And I know all the Liberty side there, they're saying, hey, there's something all over it. I think Shamad Lomax. He saw the whole thing. He spied it the whole time there, and he is playing one heck of a game. Great defense. See at the bottom of your screen right here. 
Buckshot just tries to push that thing in there, but Shamad is right there and is like, nope, got my arm in there and knocked that thing free. Great job. Intended target was redshirt freshman wide receiver Noah Frith. Aiden Alves to punt. OJ Clark back deep. Clark has a return. OJ Clark is wrestled down near the 20 by Caleb Coleman. So we have ourselves a ball game now. We Seven do. ticks left in the third, and the Aggies will have a chance to tie it on this drive. Yeah, so two things. We need a long, sustained drive by the offense, although I'll, I'll take a quick score. But <laughs> the defense also needs some time for rest, right? So they've, they've been really playing their heart out there, and uh, they need just a break. So a long, sustained drive that's putting points on the board is really what we need. Right now, time of possession is plus 11 in the Aggies' favor, but it doesn't feel like that. The Aggies have had two pretty long drives during this half. One of the final plays, maybe the final play of the quarter. And it's caught on the sideline by Isaiah Lottie all the way up to the 40-yard line. 21-yard connection. Quarter. Man, that was a great play. Took a long time to form, and he got the ball out there. Great blocking up front. Well, good way to finish off the third. And the Aggies for just the second time this year in a close one into the fourth. Fourth quarter up next. Two productive drives so far for the Aggie offense. 33-yard field goal for Dylan Brown, and then a 39-yard field goal for Brown as well. And Josh Atkins is really starting to spread it out to a number of different wide receivers. There's the wide receivers coach, Corey Martin. And, Danny, you talked to him a few weeks ago about his unit. I did. And you know what? I really enjoy speaking to Corey Martin because he has he's just very upbeat, and he's got a group that he really believes in and he likes them. He thinks they're going to be able to do big things. And I said, well, do you need a go-to guy, Coach? And he said, yeah, we could. you'll see one. But all in all, the bunch, there's a bunch of go-to guys that we have out there. Love the job he's doing. Safe to say that Tony Nicholson is emerging, not necessarily the go-to guy maybe yet, but emerging as potentially that guy. Here's Jason Huntley, who changes directions again. Blocked by Terrell Warner. That might be a block in the back. Terrell Warner just came in. He hasn't played much. Also committed a penalty last week for illegal motion on his first series that he was a part of. You know, we saw that thing up here the whole time because you're, you're there. Jason Huntley's trying to make something happen. He tries to bounce it back to the left, and you're standing there, and you can see the guys just zoning in on Huntley as he's coming towards you, and, and it's just hard to keep your hands off the guy from his side or back, and... And he didn't. He just kind of gave a little. In the back, offense number seven, ten-yard penalty, replay, first down. So that's a ten-yard penalty on Terrell Warner, JUCO transfer from Dodge City Community College, Holden, Louisiana native. That is penalty number thirteen on the Yankees. Liberty has committed eight. Really hurts the to drive too, right? Atkins in the flat for Tony Nichols in the aforementioned wide receiver. Still a couple yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. He gets seven. It's going to be second down and 17. You know, I like what Tony does after he gets the ball on those extra yards after the catch. He takes care of the football. He sees two defenders that are there, and he splits them. He ducks his head, and he goes, tries to sneak and pop right through there. He still, you know, got extra two or three yards after that. Second down and 13 after the catch of seven yards. Atkins going deep near sideline. O.J. Clark, flag came in, ball came loose. Elijah Benton, the rover in coverage. Might be pass interference. I think it is, I think it's pass interference. Defense number 31, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. So O.J. Clark could not hang on, but it's pass interference on Benton. And that's one of the few deep shots we've seen the Aggies take. Yeah, you know, confidence there, too, to be able to sit back in the pocket and throw that ball over top there and give O.J. some time or clearance to run underneath there. You know, that's just that's just a good job right there. Good confidence by Josh. 
Aggies into Liberty territory. Atkins fakes the pitch, and he slides towards the first down. Not a great spot. He's going to be two yards shy. He, he is, but, but he's still getting positive yardage. And here's the thing. You know, it happens to the Aggies all the time. Someone has to look at the quarterback, and you have to figure out who's going to guard him or who's going to stay on top of him. In this case, no one was there, and so he's going to go get as many positive yards as possible. They spot it where Atkins started his slide, so he was two yards short. Huntley still driving forward, and Huntley has three yards for the first down. That balance of pass and run is starting to even out again. It is. I like it because it, it allows there. He's going to give him a little talk there, make sure everything is fine. No more penalties for sure. But the balance allows you to, to look at what the defense is giving you. So if they're going to sit back in a zone far off, then we're going to take the pass. If they're going to come in and try to go get you, you know, you may be trying to do something different. So this is where the cat and mouse game comes into play. Running back is Gibson. Adkins pump fakes, throws towards the end zone. He has Isaiah Lottie, and he overthrew him by a foot. That looks like the same pass pattern they ran before. It's kind of a, a Z out kind of thing, and he just goes right to that corner there, and he almost had that. Lots of time, pump fake, and then just tries to drop it in there. Keytrail Clark, the true freshman from Richmond, Virginia, was defending Lottie on the play. Clark started the previous two games at field corner. Front side pressure, Atkins hit as he throws, oh. and he's almost intercepted. Oh. Scruggs nearly had his second pick. Atkins oh, was belted as he threw. For an injured player. Wow, I was holding my breath the whole time on that. Here he is right there. They come with a blitz. Try to pick up everyone, but they have way too many guys. You can't get them all. He gets the pass off anyway, but it drifts on them. Well, and it might be a decent pass for somebody else, Danny, but O.J. Clark is listed 5'7", just not a big guy. Yeah, here's the thing, too. When you're a receiver, they tell you, you know, don't tip the ball up, bad things happen. When, you're, when you have a perfect pass that looks like you're going to pick and it's coming to you and all of a sudden someone sticks a paw up and it, and it changes the trajectory of the ball coming to you, I think that's really what saved a pick happening there, you know, because it, it just didn't come true to the defender. It kind of bounced off him there. So maybe we got a break there. Vincent Elefonte was the man who was injured. Redshirt senior from Upland, California. Big guy at 6'4", 310 at the defensive tackle position for Liberty. Aggies on a third down and 10. Heavy rush, and Atkins is sacked. And that's a big one. Yeah, that's a tough one there. And, and this half we talked about, uh, we could see some of the changes that are taking place from a Liberty um, strategies perspective. And, and it's certainly to go get Josh and not let him sit back there. In that case, they went and got him this last play, and they were able to get to him. Fourth and 16th, Eisler will punt. Has the chance here to really pin this Liberty offense deep. There's DJ Stubbs. The punt by Theisler. Stubbs calls for a fair catch. It's over his head, and it's going to be down at the six-yard line. Good punt for Theisler. Nice. Really needed that one. Yeah, we did. Nice, nice punt. Inside the 10, that's what they really look for there. Kind of a back spin on that. He just dropped that thing in there. It's kind of like a golfer, Danny, when you're hitting like a 60 or 70-yard pitching wedge, and you have to lay off it a little bit and yeah. drop it in there. And good wedge there for Theisler. Now we need the defense to step up again, right? I've said that all night long. It's coach Sukup, he's our linebacker coach. Talked to him a, a few weeks back too as well, and uh, he's a hard driver. You can see him right there. He's a former Aggie himself. Played in uh, one of a uh, four-year Letterman. Looking for a big play from his linebacker unit right here. Hickson bouncing away. To the sideline, he was pressured there by John Graves, the third. Only gets two. 
Graves the third, a freshman, red shirt from Lancaster, Texas. Shaman Lomax has had a really good day in the Aggie secondary. Antonio Gandy Golden still does not have a catch in this half. He's on the bottom side of the screen. 11.42 left in the fourth. Hickson. About a yard shy of the first down. It's going to be third and a long one. You know, and Liberty's trying to spread us out a little bit. When you spread them out and you use Gandy Golden as a decoy, your linebackers and everyone spreads, and that allows you to run that little play back up in the middle there, and, and you get some good positive yards with that. Donovan King is in right now at defensive tackle. Liberty trying to call a timeout, and they'll get it. Liberty. You know, that's one of the changes to Danny with the head coach the on a platform. Hugh Freeze can't get the referee's attention to call a timeout. There he is in his NASCAR pit box. And his flames are in a tough spot here. Third and a long one on the 15. We're back after this. Ten fifty-seven left in the fourth. Oliver Suka backpedaling off the field. The Aggie linebackers coach and the assistant head coach. Third and a long one for Calverts. In the Flames in this jumbo package sets, and it looks like they pushed the pile for the first down. They did. Frankie Hickson has been the running back so often here tonight. That was Peyton Pickett. The big redshirt junior who's their biggest back at 5'10", 210. You know, when you get behind that big wall, that big front line there, it just, it's hard to stop that. Pickett was really good last year on this field against the Aggies in a 49-41 Aggie win. Rashi Hodge showing pressure, picked up by the running back, Mack, but they can't pick up Devin Richardson, his first career sack. Let me just say, Coach Spaziani is calling a fantastic game, Adam. Here's what you're going to see. You're going to see a blitz off the side. They see it coming. You bring a back. You bring Mack over to pick up the back. However, you run out of guys, and you bring Devin Richardson on a delayed blitz. There's no one left to get him. He goes in there and makes the sack. That's a, just a great call. Sack number four for the Yagis, two for Wilcox, one for Yarborough, and now one for Richardson. Calvert completes the pass. That is Damian King. Whistle was blown. He's trying to say he wasn't down. Down by rule, it's third down. He kept on going, then Phipps was chasing him. Third down and a bunch for Liberty. Again, they brought pressure in. Coach Baziani dialed up some pressure. You see kind of a delayed blitz by Matt Young. Gets it across the middle there. And they whistled them down. There was clear whistles all over the place. Javon Ferguson made the tackle. Leads the Yankees in tackles again this year. Liberty 4 for 11 on a third down. Third and a dozen. Pressure comes. Calvert under pressure has to chuck it downfield. Overshoots Antonio Gandy Golden. We know he's good. He's not that good. He can't make that catch. You know, I, I see Buckshot over there talking to the officials, just asking about, hey, look, you know, there's there's a lot of maybe he felt like there was something extra, but there was just good coverage all the way around there. Look, Coach Sukup gives him a little jump as well. That's a great defensive stand right there, Adam. So one week after playing their best defensive game of the season allowing a season-low 30 against Fresno State. The defense playing even better tonight, allowing only 13 so far against a Liberty offense that is averaging almost 30 points per game. The punt is away to O.J. Clark, and it will bounce wow. out of bounds. Really good spot for the Yankees on offense. They trail by one touchdown. Can they make a fourth-quarter comeback? Don't go anywhere. We're back to Aggie Memorial after these messages. 
Adam Young alongside Danny Nee. There's a look at Roy Lopez, who's missing his fifth straight game with a leg injury. Roy could be back in the final couple. If he's healthy, he can come back and still get a red shirt and then be good to go for next year. Now he knows he's on the TV screen. He's on the video <laughs> board here. Oh, man, what a guy. Don't give him a mic. Uh, the Aggies run it on first down. Glad to have you with us tonight. Vinny Conway is our director. Rita Rodriguez, our producer. John Reyes, our engineer. Two-yard pickup on the first down run for Huntley. Anthony Casals up here doing our talent stats. Doing a great job, as always. Clock moving, just over eight to go. Atkins looking for Isaiah Lottie. And he makes the catch. Might have been a one-handed snag inside the red zone. Oh, Adam, what a catch. But what a throw. And I want to also kind of give props to the offensive line there because that play took a long time. It wasn't a one-two, get it out there, right? So there he is. He's sitting, he's sitting, finally releases it and just drops it right in there. Is that a one arm? Yep. Left arm oh, for nice. a right-hander. Oh, nice call, partner. Huntley spins out of the tackle. Jason Huntley has room to the pylon. Touchdown, Aggies. Jason Huntley will not be denied, right? He spun out of there, nothing to the right. Man, he sees it to the outside. How about that extra gear he found to push that into the end zone? Here it is here, he's going to the right, nothing doing there, bounces around, he sees the end zone, he hits that second gear, third gear, he's in. Third straight week with a rushing touchdown for Huntley, his 12th career rushing touchdown, his 24th career touchdown overall, and we are tied. Just give the ball to the All-American and get out of the way. Huntley having himself a day. His 24th career touchdown. We're tied in Las Cruces. Jason Huntley finds the end zone 13-13. We are tied in the fourth. It was we are tied in the fourth. It was 10-0 Liberty at halftime. The Aggies have had a couple of field goals in this half and now a touchdown, their first touchdown tonight. And it was all set up by the 41-yard touchdown, or I should say 41-yard catch by Isaiah Lotti leading to the Huntley 12-yard touchdown run. So a good half for the Aggies on offense now. A couple of field goals and a touchdown. Hey, now it's back to the defense one more time. It's one of those things about playing defense. It's like, yeah, that was great. Huntley did a great job, great catch but now the defense has to stand up again. Lewis and Hickson back deep for Liberty. Kickoff for Dylan Brown is through the end zone. Momentum, Danny, certainly on the Aggies side right now. Yeah, without a doubt, and I think you gotta ride that high. The thing you have to be careful about here and college football players is that you can't just let the emotions, pure emotions, get away from you. You still have to play. You have to know where you are in the game. You have to know the score. You have to know what down and distance it is and know that the other team is trying to dial something up that you may not have seen before. That man right there is not going to be okay with just walking out of here at 13-13. So you know something's happening. So momentum, yes. Cautiousness, absolutely. Liberty's three second half drives, 51-yard field goal, punt, punt. They have not been successful drives so far. Buckshot Calvert, the quarterback. Senior out of Plantation, Florida. They pitch it to Mack. And he's shouldered out of bounds by Austin Perkins. Now, you know, that's, a, that's just a quick toss to get outside around the end there. You've got Matt Young on that corner right there that maybe took an inside step. Maybe should have been outside a little bit more on the pursuit angle. Um, you got to see just a quick toss and get it around the corner, and when you do, you just go get those extra yards right there. Calvert, 15 of 13, or I should say 15 of 30 for 119 and one touchdown, which are low numbers for him. He's had three straight 300-yard passing games. Right back to Mack. 
and he has tripped up by the turf. The turf monster got him, or else he would have been into Aggie territory quite easily. Oh, that was going to be a tough one, right? That was going to be your safeties have to come in there and try to squeeze on him and, and make a play there, but you can see a big hole right there. You have linebackers that are stepping up there. They're getting caught in all the garbage in there. He quickly gets to the third level, and you're right, the turf monster was on our side that play. It goes for 10. It could have gone for 70 if he wasn't tripped up. Young with the pressure. Tackle is missed. Not a whole lot in front of Mack defensively. And he's finally taken down by Jason Simmons, Jr. A breakdown and a big one for the Aggie defense. Yeah, that's a tough one right there. That's one that's going to hurt you because that's a big play that you've been trying to stay away from with these big explosive plays. you got to fake one way, pump the other. You miss a tackle. That's Perkins that missed that tackle. No one's left there. Mack will walk into the end zone. Touchdown, Liberty. The best they have looked all night on this drive, and Mack was a big part of it. A former FCS All-American at Maine with his second rushing touchdown in a Flames uniform. Boy, that celebration is short-lived, right? Here it is right here, the touchdown. Get to the outside. They just, just uh, caved everyone in and made it a nice, easy walk for him. Point after for Probert, who's had a good night. And Liberty is back in front. So 6-19 left in the fourth, and that was a quick, easy drive for Liberty. Four plays, 75 yards, a minute 27. That results in a four-yard touchdown run for Mack. Yeah, that's a touchdown right there, and really the big play was the one where that set up that big, long one there, and that's what makes it tough. So celebration momentum that we talked about is short-lived, but the offense has got to come back. You've got to rally, and you've got to put a volley and stay on the points there. So this was the big play. This was the one that set it up there right there. Perkins comes up. He gets chipped. He didn't get a clean up, a clean alleyway to make a tackle. And backers are already lost in traffic and just turns into a huge explosive plays, which is really the only huge explosive play that's that they've had tonight. Fortunately, it set him up for a score. Yeah, that was a 54-yard touchdown catch for 54-yard catch, I should say, for Mack during that drive. So four plays, 75 yards. And now the Aggies will have to answer. Jason Huntley from the end zone. He will take it out. Not much on the return for Huntley up to the 19-yard line. Tackle made by Brody Brun for Liberty. So 6-14 left for Atkins in the Aggie offense that has been good in this half. Atkins now 17 of 26 for two and a quarter. Still no touchdowns, two interceptions. Both came early in the game. Aggies will pass on first down. Wide open, O.J. Clark. Wow, he was wide open. Deep in route, and that's just sitting there. And, the, and of course, the defense is in a zone. They're sitting back deep. They're not going to allow an explosive play that happened to the Ags. So they're giving up a lot of that. And, you know, if that's the case, they should just take that all the way down the field. Adkins will throw again. This time he's rolling out a right. Austin Lewis is chasing him. And he fires to O.J. Clark again. Quality pickup of eight yards for O.J. Josh kind of rolls out, keeps the play alive there so he can get a good vision. Uh, O.J. is open the whole time, and he just sat in an opening in the zone area in between two zones and just waited for the ball. Here's Huntley. Big hole for Huntley. Good block for O.J. Clark. First down and more for Jason Huntley, who tight ropes the near sideline. God, that, I, I just love the confidence that he's showing with his runs here. First of all, great blocking up front, right? He bounces to the outside. He didn't go down. Someone dove at his feet, and he didn't give up at all, and he just kept pushing that thing. 22-yard run for Huntley, who earlier had a 36-yard carry that was called back 
because of a holding call. That's great. That's great blocking too, by the way, there by Tony Nicholson. Aggies right back to the air. This is Navion oh. Mitchell who can't hang on. It, it wasn't going to be much. It wasn't. Elijah Benton was right in front of him, but that's a drop for Navion. You think he peeked upfield at him? Kind of looked like it. Mitchell came in as a running back. He's really turned into exclusively a wide receiver now because of his speed, and there really isn't much of a need for him in the backfield with Gibson and Huntley. Empty backfield for the Aggies are in second down and 10. Five out wide, including Huntley, who's in the slot. Good coverage. Wheel route for Huntley, who's shoved, and that's pass interference on Benton. The cat and mouse. Empty backfield set. Liberty loads the line of scrimmage. Defense number 31. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. There you see the pass interference right there. It's going to go back and make a play on the ball and just couldn't do it. But, you know, Jay, Josh Atkins had to sit in the pocket. He didn't have enough blockers for everyone they're bringing at him, and he had the patience to sit in there, knew he was going to take a pop and deliver a great pass. The Aggies all the way down to the 17-yard line. Gibson motions into the backfield. He'll get the carry on first down, and he runs right into Jesse Lemonier. Lemonier, the big man, redshirt senior out of Hialeah, Florida, has been everywhere for Liberty. You know, they, they uh, really stock, uh, stacked the box that last play and just was not going to let anything happen in there where you can break someone free. That was just the fifth carry for Gibson. Hunley has 15 for 78 and a touchdown. Adkins rifles a pass that is bobbled and then caught by O.J. Clark. And he has a first down. Wow. He missed it initially, then he caught it near his knees. Do you, do you think it was just because he delivered such a BB on that thing? I mean, he stood back there. Josh Atkins, I'm talking about the quarterback. Watch how much juice he puts on that ball. He just drills it right in there. And, oh, man, good hands on the second try. Aggies down to the six. Nothing there for Huntley. And it's going to be a loss of a couple. He's driven backwards. Rouse Rusins was in on the tackle. Rusins, a redshirt junior from Latvia, who had nine tackles last week against UNM. And loss of two on the play for Huntley. You know, they're coming back to similar play that Huntley scored on, and this is to the other side, and there's just not a lot there. Second down and goal. Adkins will fake the handoff. It's on the turf. He lost it, and it's picked up by Liberty. Adkins fumbled the football. Liberty picks it up. Recovered by the defense. First down. And that is the third Aggie turnover. So this is Josh. I think uh, all, the, all the coaches had seen that everyone is collapsing on the running back. So it was just a keep. He was just keeping the ball in there. And someone just stuck a big paw in there and knocked it out. And that's the third turnover, too, when the Aggies were driving for a potential touchdown or at least points. 3.15 left, three timeouts for the Aggies. Trailing by seven. Just to keep. They're just going to give the ball, keep it, fake the handoff, and... Josh just got a big paw that pulled it in there and popped that thing out. That's just too bad. You know, I saw that play all the way, all the way, Adam, that coaches were looking at because the last two running plays, trying to get the clock right, the last two running plays, everyone was just, just coming, screaming down on the running back. And I thought, yeah, that would be perfect for him just to keep that around the end there. And that's what that was. And he got the clock was yards. After the clock operator erroneously started, it'll be first down. The clock will start on the snap. You know, three turnovers is one thing, but the way they have happened is really frustrating right now for the Yankees. Mac. Aggies trying to force a turnover of their own. 
Richardson and Wilcox combining for the stop. We'll see how the Aggies use their timeouts during this drive if they use some. Clock moving, three minutes left to go. Yeah, this is tough. So the defense has got two things. One is you got to make a stop. You got to get three and out for sure. And the second is if you can't create a turnover, create a turnover. So if you can strip the ball, strip it. Of course, Liberty knows that and they're going to try to take care of the ball. Um, so this is a, this is tough and they're going to try to use the clock and uh, everyone's got to figure out how many timeouts they want to use and when they want to use them. Play clock is down to 10 for Buckshot Calvert. Are in second down and four. Only two wide receivers in right now for the Flames. The call is to Mack. And Mack has the first down as he just drags tacklers all the way up to the 27-yard line. He gets 17 on the carry. Aggies tied it in the fourth, 13-13. Flames scored moments ago with six minutes left on an impressive four-play, 75-yard scoring drive. And then a fumble for Atkins inside the 10-yard line. And now the Aggie defense is trying to get the offense back on the field. Here's Mack. Big guy, and you can see him right there protecting the football, making sure he doesn't put it on the turf. Just gonna stay, they're just going to stay conservative, keep running the ball, keep the clock rolling, and not allow anything to happen to the ball. I'm out of the half, 30 seconds. Eight Will the clock operator for please re replace the clock to one? He's up to 18 carries now. Hickson with a five. dozen. 135, please. Those have been the two featured backs here tonight for Liberty. So, turnovers again, Danny. Turnovers again for turnovers the Aggies. Turnovers makes it tough. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And as you look at the previous three games for these two teams and what they've done in their previous three, the common theme has been turnovers. The New Mexico game could have gone the Aggies' way without a pick six to start the game by Josh Atkins. The Fresno State game, three interceptions. There's been turnovers in all the losses so far this year for the Aggie offense. And Liberty's looking to win their fourth in a row and go to four and two after an 0 and two start. Here's Frankie Hickson, Hickson to the 50 and he slides down there. Did not want to stop the clock and get out of bounds. So a wise choice there for Hickson to yeah, slide. Just gonna keep the, keep the clock rolling and it was a first down, so the chains moved, and the Aggies call a timeout, or else the clock would have started when the chains were moved. And you know, t the, the turnovers tonight, Adam, are bad. Three, three are bad, but where they happen, it almost feels like it's salt in the wound, right? Because you have this one where we're coming in for a score on the four, wherever that was. We threw a pick that's on the, f on the four, and uh, one that was back on the 29. All of those are three scores that we're about to put in. Coach Sukup doesn't look too happy, not that I blame him at all. Those are tough breaks. Those are very tough breaks to come back from. Defense has played well enough for this football team to win the game here today, no question. The only thing they haven't done is force a turnover. But they've limited Liberty to 20. Flames are still shy of 350 yards of total offense, and there's a tackle for loss by Rashi Hodge Jr. And the Aggies will use their final timeout. Their final timeout of the half. 124 the left. It's going to bring up second down and 12. To one minute, 26 seconds. Some way, somehow, the offense and the defense have to find a way to click and get on the same page together. Join us at the Coaches Show live at Rudy's Barbecue on Wednesdays from 6 until 7 at 1020 North Telshore Boulevard. We're there every single Wednesday with head coach Doug Martin and other Aggie coaches, as well as AD Marty Omocha. That's the Aggie Coaches Show live at Rudy's Barbecue 6 to 7 on Wednesday nights. Second down and 12.
Motion is the tight end, Jackson. And the Aggies jumped. That was Wilcox. Pass is complete to Kevin Shaw, who's been quiet tonight. Shaw with his first catch. He had 18 Defense, before that. Number 10, five-yard penalty, replaced second down. And then pressing hard, right? So you're pressing hard. You, you try to get a quick jump on it, and you just jump off sides. Ninth Liberty penalty, the Aggies have committed 13. 120 left. Well, you knew this was certainly a winnable game, a game that probably could have gone either way. And the Aggies certainly had their chances here tonight. Defense gave them a shot in the first half. The offense played much better in half two, which was also the case last week. But a late fumble by Atkins inside the 10-yard line will turn into the story. No timeouts left for the Aggies to stop the clock. It's going to be a tough loss, Adam. I don't know how you uh, can't really candy coat it anyway, but to say that's a winnable game. We're in position. We're scoring. We have three scores that we could have walked away with something. And it didn't happen, and um, it's, it's the turnovers. And coach says turnovers, turnovers, and that's what it was. Play clock is at 12. Game clock is at 20. No timeouts left for the Aggies. The Aggies will head on the road for three starting next weekend against Central Michigan in Mount Pleasant. Liberty calls their second timeout and Liberty will of the half. Use a timeout. Seconds. Flames will have a bye week and then play Maine in a couple weeks. They're going to be four and two now, and they're feeling good. And you look at the Aggies, Danny, and I mean, certainly shoulda, coulda, woulda, but you know, two wins for sure on the table if you play better defensively against UNM, and then this one here if you do really anything on offense. And there's been other games like this as well, but. The Aggies very easily could be 2-4 and four at this point. Instead, they're going to be 0-6. I, I agree with you, Adam. And there's a look at the next football home game, November 16th at 2 p.m. when the Aggies play Incarnate Word. That's in over a month, and that will do it. That was the final snap of the football game as Liberty hangs on for the 20-13 win to defeat the Aggies, avoiding a second-half Aggie comeback. A defensive battle results in a Liberty win. Four straight for the Flames. They are now 4-2. The Aggies drop to 0-6. Danny and I wrap it up when we come back. Final score here tonight, 20 to 13. Liberty defeats the Aggies by seven as Hugh Freeze and the Flames hang on for the win. Liberty has now won four in a row and they improve to four and two on the season. New Mexico Farm and Livestock Bureau is proud to sponsor the Ag Day Aggie game. Agriculture is all around you and we represent farmers and ranchers across the state who grow the foods you love from your favorite steak to the green chili on your cheeseburger. Your food comes from your neighbors. Tough one tonight for the Aggies. They had a chance to tie it late, a fumble inside the 10 yard line, uh, cost the Aggies points in the end and uh, turnovers were a big issue in the end. Penalties as well, Danny. Penalties and turnovers. It seems like we had that same talk last week, right? And those three turnovers were key because those were times we were about to score. Mm -hmm. And it makes it hard. It makes it very tough to win when that happens. All right, time now for the game highlights. A really good defensive battle. Both defenses played well in this one. Certainly you can say the Aggie defense was good enough to win this football game here today. And uh, some good drives early, Danny. They resulted in turnovers, but the Aggies were moving the ball well early. They were clicking from the first came out of the out of the box. They were moving right down the field, and Tony Nicholson had some great catches, some great runs, putting the big drives together. And this was a big one. Eli Anderson just couldn't hang on. Scruggs with the interception, a 71-yard return. It leads to a field goal for Proberts and for Liberty. And here's another interception. This one, an interception by Tillman. The first of two picks for Atkins. Touchdown catch of two yards for the big tight end Fouts. 
and Liberty led 10-0 at halftime. And then we saw the Aggie offense have some really good drives in the third quarter and early on in the fourth. Now, in the third, they were resulting in field goals, but good drives nonetheless. Yeah, and the offense was coming together, and they were moving the ball quite nicely, and the defense was doing their part to keep us in the game. Yeah, defense made plays. Here was potentially a huge play. Tavis Abraham just could not keep his foot in on a good pass by Tony Nicholson. Lomax might have played his best game all year. I agree with you 100%. Great defense by Shamad Lomax. It was 13-6 Liberty after three. The Aggie defense continued to swarm the quarterback. Devin Richardson had a sack. The Aggies had four sacks as a team. Beautifully thrown ball. One-handed catch for Isaiah Lotti on this scoring drive that resulted in a 12-yard touchdown run for Jason Huntley. Huntley had a big day on the ground as he ran for 42. But Liberty on the next drive, Danny, four plays, and they go 70-plus yards for the touchdown. That was an explosive play, and that really set up this drive right here. That's the score. It was the final score and just made it tough. Here we are coming back at it, giving it one more shot. Put the ball in the carpet. Yeah, three turnovers on the Aggies, none on Liberty, and I'm sure that's going to be the topic this week with head coach Doug Martin is turnovers, turnovers, turnovers as they continue to be a problem for the Aggies. What jumps out at you here outside of penalties and turnovers? Are, are you okay with 396 of offense? That's pretty I, I good, think right? So. I think you'd want to be okay with it. Those are great numbers right there. Great passing, great rushing right there. All of those are good. It's when you drop to the bottom half there where you see the number of penalties and the turnovers. That's just got to get away from that. Well, you had a good feeling late. The Aggies were starting to play well offensively. The turnover bug hits again. Uh, it's going to continue to be character checks going forward, Danny. Now the Aggies head on the road for three, and you don't have a win yet. These are character checks coming up in practice and in games. It, you're right, and it's going to be hard in practice. There's no doubt about it, but you just can't give up. They were persistent. You know, the, the talent is there, Adam, and they just got to get it together and get it in the same line, right, the offense and defense. Yeah, big positive tonight. The defense, their second straight quality game. Four sacks as a team. Wilcox was really good in this one. Time now for our Whataburger play of the game. And this was before the touchdown run for Huntley. This was a huge one-handed catch of 41 yards for Isaiah Lottie. Yeah, and you made the call. As soon as you saw, you saw him pull that one hand in there. I'm not sure how you were able to see it way up here, but that was great separation. And he does pull that thing in one-handed. Nicely done. Great pass. Great catch. And now the Aggies head on the road for three. The Aggies will have Central Michigan coming up. Then they're going to have Georgia Southern. Ole Miss is left on the schedule as well. Not going to be home for around a month or so, a little over a month. We're going to know a lot about this football team when they return home in a month. Yeah, no doubt about it. But tomorrow's a new day. You get up and you got to grind it out. I mean, these are college athletes, and they have to put yesterday behind them, and you have to move forward. So the Aggies will travel to Mount Pleasant next week. They're going to play Central Michigan for their first of three on the road. That's coming up next for Aggie football.